You're watching Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Welcome to the AAC Championship on ABC, presented by Arby's as part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. From New Orleans and Yeoman Stadium on the Tulane campus, the American Conference champion will be crowned this afternoon as the 18th ranked Green Wave seeking their first conference title in 24 years, hosts 22nd ranked UCF, which is 2-0 in AAC title games. A spot in a New Year's Six Bowl game, the Cotton Bowl on the line, the biggest stage ever for a lot of these young men. We already had one terrific championship game earlier on ABC. You just witnessed Kansas State winning the Big 12 title game, putting TCU's playoff hopes up in the air. We'll see what happens in game two, and don't forget the ACC championship tonight on ABC. Tulane won the toss and deferred to the second half, so we'll be on defense here momentarily. Welcome to the booth, Dave Pash and Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville down on the field. UCF was the only team to beat Tulane in conference play this year, but had to win last week in South Florida just to make the championship game. And meanwhile, Tulane, one of the best stories this year in the country. Two wins last year, two losses this year. And it's UCF's final game in an American conference game as they're going to the Big 12 a season for now. I would love to leave this conference with a championship. And for Tulane, going back to fall camp, this was their goal after an embarrassing two-win season last year to get here and win a championship. It's all on the line here this afternoon. From the 25-yard line, Plumley, the quarterback, this is where he's at his best. When he's running, he slides for a gain of about eight. Let's bring in Tom Luganville from the field. Well, guys, I'll tell you, you saw John Rice Plumley running right there. Now, he's been nursing a hamstring injury, but Mikey King, the guy that came in and saved the day last week, is not playing today in street clothes. Decided to preserve his red shirt, played in four games. It was a player choice. Gus Malzahn acknowledged they would not be in this game without Mikey Keane, so they have to get freshman Thomas Castellano ready behind John Rice Plumley if he were to get nicked, because the quarterback run game is huge. And Harvey with a catch out of the backfield gets the first down. And that's not a guarantee that Plumley makes it through the game. He's been banged up several times, was in fact hurt last week in their win over USF. It was Keene that was in that led the come from behind win. Plumley's battled a hamstring injury. And again, he's a terrific runner, so we'll see if that impacts him at all in this game today. RJ Harvey getting the carry and getting the edge, but a flag down. Harvey fumbled the ball, and it's recovered by UCF. Harvey jumped on it as the ball just sat there on the turf at the 47-yard line. Let's see what the penalty marker is about. Hold it. Offense, number 82. 10-yard penalty. Still first down. So holding call on UCF. The Knights won nine games during the season. They have been to a New Year's Six Bowl three different times, including twice as AAC champions. And again, Tulane, best season it's had since 1998. Under Tommy Bowden, they went 12-0 that year, but that was long before the invention of the American Conference. Here's Johnny Richardson getting a pitch, and he steps out of bounds. On first and 20, he gets a chunk of it back, a gain of about six. You're going to get a steady dose of the run game. You know that with Gus Malzahn and his offense, but the best rushing attack in the American Conference this year, over 243 yards per game and had a ton of success against Tulane in the first matchup. 336, the most this Green Wave defense relinquished all season long. And you can tell this UCF offense here early attacking this defense on the ground. And for UCF, that was their first ranked road win in a decade when they won here at Yeoman Stadium. Plumley to the air, dumping it off to his favorite target, Ryan O'Keefe, to the 49-yard line for a gain of nine. That is the 68th catch on the season for O'Keefe, it brings up third down. UCF is ninth in the country in third down conversion rate. Green Wave, this Tulane defense leads the American Conference. Great matchup here on third down today. Quarterback run game, a big part of what Plumlee this offense want to do in these spots. And Plumlee to throw. Trying to set up a wide receiver screen. O'Keefe caught it, but he got lit up. 
It'll be fourth down, Macon Clark, first team, American Conference safety with the big hit, fourth down, and it will be a punt. We talked to the defensive coordinator, Chris Hampton, yesterday, and he said Macon Clark might be the most important player for us in this game, setting firm edges, and you see the nickel come up with a big, strong tackle, creating this first possession punt. Good start here for the Green Wave defense. Mitch McCarthy, true freshman punter, hanging that one in the air. And the fair catch made at the 15-yard line by Jaquan Jackson. And so the two-lane offense, which is led by Ty J. Spears, the Offensive Player of the Year in the American. He had 14 rushing touchdowns, which led the league in just under 100 yards per game. So good with the football, catching it. Out of the backfield, he has patience, the ability to make you miss. Though he's only 195 pounds, runs with physicality, does not make mistakes six straight games without a missed assignment or a bust. In 35 attempts last week, none of those carries were for negative yardage. The quarterback for Tulane is Michael Pratt. Gonna hand it off to Spears on first down, and he's dumped at the 16, dragged down by Jarvis Ware. So Pratt, who's the guy that's battled injury going back to last year, you see he's got a neck collar on that's to protect him from concussions. He had a serious concussion a year ago, barely practiced at all last year, healthier this year, and that's why the numbers were so good. He's a very talented player, a junior from Boca Raton, Florida. Smart, tough, process as well, and seemingly always makes the right play. And gonna hand it off on second down and nine. Spears out to the 20-yard line for a gain of four. Third and five coming up. And this UCF defense been so good all season tackling, except last week against USF. Second quarter in the second half, really missed a lot of tackles. Defensive coordinator Travis Williams said, that's something that we wanted to address. We gotta do a better job finishing out this season. Doing a better job tackling, especially on 22, getting more hats to the football. Third and five for Tulane. First American regular season championship. Only been to four bowl games the last 20 years. As that pass is caught for a first down by Deuce Watts at the 27-yard line. That's the 29th catch for Watts. Boy, when they need a big play, oftentimes it's Pratt to number two. No question. The biggest of their wide receivers, good strong hands by Deuce Watts working outside on Corey Thornton. His corners of UCF, they've got great length. A good timing right there from Pratt to Watts. Well, on first down, it's play action. Here's a pump fake and a downfield throw to the tight end, Tyreek James. Knocked out of bounds at the 46-yard line, a gain of 19. James with 25 catches on the season, senior from Waco, Texas. Well, I like this play to design here by Savoboda. Sub 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 the offensive coordinator, excellent job on the interior, fakes as if he's going to block, and then he just runs the wheel up the sideline. Nobody identifies him, and a good find by Pratt. 20 different players caught at least one pass this year from Michael Pratt that led the country. Pratt over the middle in traffic, another new receiver, Shea Wyatt. First catch of the day, down to the 38 of UCF, a gain of 18. But Michael Pratt is comfortable back there in the pocket. Cool, calm, collected. Shea Wyatt, really nice job sitting down the middle of the field. A good find once again by Pratt. Now back to the ground game and Spears for the 35-yard line. Spears, the first non-quarterback to win Offensive Player of the Year in the American Grand of the Conference. Didn't start till 2014. He had 158 yards against UCF during the regular season. And as we mentioned, coming off that huge win at Cincinnati, which was the first win against the ranked team period since 1984. That ended a 61-game losing streak for Tulane against ranked foes. Spears again, broken tackle. Spears is free inside the 20, and he lowers the boom on the defender, Jarvis Ware, at the 15-yard line, a gain of 20. Well, Jeremiah Jean-Baptiste going to come downhill, and he's got an opportunity to meet Spears right at the line of scrimmage, and he just whiffs. Nice job by a 49 tackle by Spears, and an excellent job finishing off this run, lowering the shoulder and falling down forward. Quality run there 
by the American Conference Offensive Player of the Year. Plays much bigger than his size, no question. Big play of the drive. Spears again. Between the tackles, down to about the 10. Dragged down by Gene Baptiste, who missed the two-lane game with a concussion, missed another game against Navy. Important player to this UCF defense. Both he and Jason Johnson, the linebacker, is going to be big in this game if they're going to shut down Spears. Jason Johnson's been an excellent addition coming over from Eastern Illinois. First team all-conference as a linebacker, a tackling machine. They will have their hands full here today. Physical offensive line at 84. Will Wallace, one of the best blocking tight ends in this league. Second down and five. Pratt to the air. Fade to the end zone. Got it. Touchdown. Shea Wyatt pulls it in for a sixth touchdown catch. Well, it's man-to-man -man coverage across the board. How about the line of scrimmage? Shea Wyatt, watch the little shimmy in the shake as he creates the space, and then he hits the wheel. Thornton unable to stay with him in man-to-man. -man. Coverage, an absolute dime by Michael Pratt. And that Tulane first drive, just about flawless as they put on. 63rd touchdown pass for Michael Pratt. That's number three all-time at Tulane, trailing only Sean King and Patrick Ramsey, two pretty big names. It's a good day to start something new. To brush away gray in five easy minutes. To put yourself out there. Jim Belvano's fight against cancer. This is the American Conference on ESPN. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville here in New Orleans where Tulane has an early 7-0 lead midway through the opening quarter. The Green Wave with the best turnaround story in the country. Two wins a year ago, 10 this year. They're the sixth team ever to accomplish that feat. A year ago, they were displaced because of the hurricane. They spent a month in Birmingham. That brought the team closer together, and it's played out that way on the field this year. Great chemistry on this team. We look at our chip play impact players for this game. We've already seen a little bit of R.J. Harvey and expect to see more. Now, he put it on the ground early already once, retained possession, but that's been an issue. But he's been the bell cow the last five games or so, and Dorian Williams, fantastic linebacker for Tulane, first team all-conference, leader of this defense, great size, speed, instincts, and a linebacker's got a chance to continue playing on Sundays in his future. Play action, Plumlee in trouble, steps away from pressure. Plumlee on the move, gets rid of it. He's an excellent athlete. In fact, when he was at Ole Miss, he was on the baseball team for a while, also played some receiver, and rushed for over 1,000 yards as their quarterback in 2019. See Chris Hampton here dialing up some pressure. Larry Brooks coming off the edge. No one identifies it. He's able to get home. Nice job by Plumlee to sidestep the pressure, but unable to locate an open target. Aggressive there on first down from defensive coordinator Chris Hampton. Going to run it here, and he's dragged down after a gain of about three. Cooper there with the stop for Tulane, bringing up third down and nine. It's going to be the key all throughout this ball game for this Tulane defense. Limiting and slowing down John Rice Plumley as a runner. So explosive and electric. Chewed them up in this stadium just a few weeks ago. Whether it was Willie Fritz or Hampton, the defensive coordinator, that is the number one item of business here this afternoon. He's rushed for over 100 yards five times, but going to throw here and a strike for a first down out to the 39 to Javon Baker. That's 51 catches on the year for the transfer from Alabama. They tried to press him at the line of scrimmage, and Javon Baker wins. See, Jarius Monroe, who's had a great start to the season, right at the line of scrimmage, and he's unable to keep inside leverage there on Baker, and a nice find to move the sticks for Plumlee. UCF 2-0 in American Conference Championship games. And, of course, their head coach, Gus Melzahn, with 
national championship experience as an assistant and then also in the national championship game as a head coach when he was at Auburn. In trouble, Plumlee is thrown down for a sack. Darius Hodges, who last year led the conference in tackles for a loss. The Smith sack this season, a loss of seven on the play. He's the best pass rusher that Tulane has, and he had to have a big day. He gets unaccounted for here. They slide the protection to the right. Nobody gets him, and an easy sack there for Darius Hodges on John Rice Plumley. John Rice Plumley, if they're going to slide that protection, he's got to identify that and get rid of that football. Hodges, second team all conference, run play on second and 17. Johnny Richardson. Out to the 36, so only about four yards. Milo Phillips on the takedown and brings up third down at 13. You've seen this Tulane defense so often this year. Sit back and drop eight to coverage. One thing last year, they were much more of a man-to-man -man team, more of a zone team, a lot of drop eight. They've thrown out there this year. Be surprised if we don't see that here on this early third and long. Talked about the running ability of Plumlee. He is a good passer and very accurate. About 65% completion rate on the season. Thrown for over 2,000 yards and 13 touchdowns. Let's see what he does here on third and 13. He's got one on one and he stumbles and that was enough for the defender, Dorian Williams, to get a beat on him and take him down at the 35 to Forrest, the second punt of the day for UCM. And Dorian Williams here just going to be sitting there, a little spy tactic on John Rice Plumley. going to mirror the quarterback, and as soon as he tries to get the perimeter, he's right there. There's a little slip from Plumley, but very well done. Coming to balance, staying in position, and getting Plumley on the ground to force the punt. He's rolling down the sideline if you don't make that tackle. McCarthy punting, and Jaquan Jackson under it. Inside is 20. Trying to get the edge and now reversing field. And down he goes at the 21 yard line. 45 yard punt, return of about seven yards. And Tulane's offense will be back on the field. The defense with another stop. If you already know that a blend of tender, an athletic conference championship on ABC is presented by Arby's. Arby's, we have the meats. And delivered by Papa John's. It's not just stuffed crust, it's Papa John's crust stuff. Tulane leading 7 0 in the American Championship. They were picked seventh preseason because they won just two games a year ago, but they won 10 this year. And I know it was week three, but still, Kansas State at the time was unranked. But we just saw them win the Big 12 Championship, beating previously unbeaten TCU. Tulane won there and then won at Cincinnati last week to clinch their first regular season American Championship. The last time they won a conference was back in 98 when they were in Conference USA. A penalty flag. Pre snap. Legal substitution. 12 men in the formation on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Boy, so that's out of a timeout. Lengthy timeout. You got about three minutes to avoid that happening, and you had 12 men on the field, so now it's first down and 15. That's unwilly Fritz like, Dave. You know him, his teams are buttoned up, disciplined, don't make a lot of mistakes, take care of the football, and Michael Pratt, what a start. In that opening drive for him. Flawless, 4-4 with the touchdown. Year seven for Fritz, number two all-time at Tulane and wins with 41. Spears gets the carry off the right side. And up to about the 23 for a gain of seven. There was a report last week that Fritz was gone, that he was taking the Georgia Tech job. That did not happen. We asked him about it yesterday, asked him if he addressed it with his team. He said, I did. I told him it's not true. I'm staying right here. Fritz has had a ton of success wherever he's been, whether it's in junior college or at the FCS level. And he's used to doing it all. In fact, at one job, he said when he wasn't coaching football, he was an announcer for track and field. So he's coming for our jobs if things don't work out. Pratt on the move, being chased, fires back across the middle. And it's a first down grab at the 32 yard line. And again, it's Shea Wyatt, his third catch of the ball game. Well, Michael Pratt showing you what he can do from the pocket. Now a little bit on the move, moving to his right, looking back across and he locates his favorite target, Shea Wyatt, an absolute strike for another first down. 
It's the other thing about Michael Pratt. He is a quality runner. It is an aspect of his game. So as this game wears on, you can easily see him start to implement more and more his mobility as a factor for this offense. Here you see him on the move to his left, getting rid of pass incomplete. Bryce Bohannon was the intended receiver. To your point on Pratt being a runner, he had a rushing touchdown and three passing touchdowns in the loss to UCF. Second team all conference. He's had a touchdown pass in 33 of his last 34 games. The one time he didn't was at UCF a year ago in a game that uh, the Knights won handily. Second down and 10. Tulane up 7-0, ball on the green wave, 33. A lot of bodies at the line of scrimmage out here, Dave. Everybody's standing up, too. Again on the roll to the left, and this time the pass was on target. Pulled in by Jaquan Jackson. Stepped out around the 38 for a pickup of five. Third down here for this UCF defense. Travis Williams, a delight to talk with yesterday. Very buttoned up. Outstanding defensive coordinator for this Knights football team. You could tell he was not happy with the way his defense played. Said he felt like they were worn down. This week, took a little bit off in the physicality, wanted to be fresh, come out here and fly around. It feels like a big third down for Williams and company here. Pratt rolling to his right, and what a throw is caught! And Watts is free inside the 30. Watts inside the 20, gets a block! And finally knocked out inside the 10 by Jarvis Ware. But it'll be first down and goal after a gain of 57. was an excellent job by Michael Pratt, understanding what he has. The corner's going to cheat down and try to rob the flat underneath. Safety rolls over the top, can't get there in time. And a great find by Michael Pratt to his favorite downfield target, Deuce Watts, and a huge play, setting the green wave up once again inside the 10-yard line. Already 160 yards of offense, 122 through the air for Pratt. First down and goal, Pratt will throw ball, tipped into the air and incomplete. So deflected at the line of scrimmage and hung up there for a while. It'll be second down and goal at the eight yard line of UCF. Dustin, you gotta love the awareness of Pratt. To your point, that corner comes buzzing down and he just pulls up, throws the ball, and throws it behind the target intentionally. Just a great feel for what's going on around him. Knew that safety was coming over the top. Yep. Put the ball where the safety couldn't get to it. It's as well done as you, you can ask. Here's Spears, dragged down for a loss at the 10 by Josh Seliscar. Guy that's been battling a hamstring injury, has not been 100% the last few games. Keep in mind as you watch this, UCF is fifth in the country in red zone defense, so they don't fold even after that huge play for Tulane. They don't. This is their counter, the bread and butter. You've probably already seen it six, seven times, and you're going to continue to see it all game, fitting up the counter, one of the real keys for UCF. And you mentioned it. This is where this defense really buckles down and thrives. One of the best red zone defenses in the country. And it's not by accident. It's by design. They practice these situations a ton. We're going to get a timeout here by Tulane. First time out of the half. Talk about this third down and goal Media play from the out. 10. When we come back to New Orleans. This isn't about chasing. The AT&T countdown to the college football playoff national championship. Monday, January 9th on ESPN. A spot in the Cotton Bowl and the New Year's Six is on the line along with, of course, the American Conference Championship. Tulane leading 7-0, looking for more. Third and goal from the UCF 10. An incomplete pass on first down, a two-yard loss on a run play on second down, and it was Spears that lost two yards, and we mentioned earlier, he didn't have any negative carries on 35 tries last week in the win at Cincinnati. Pratt rolling left, throwing left, and not on the same page with his receivers. Deuce Watts had his back turn, so did the other wideout, Jaquan Jackson, and so it's fourth down. 
Yeah, it's surprising coming out of a timeout. Such miscommunication there. Watts never turned back for the football. Clearly, that's where Michael Pratt looked like he was going from the onset. Roll the pocket to his left, and Watts never turned around to look for the ball. And big stop there for the UCF defense. So a 27-yard field goal try by Valentino Ambrosio, who's 9 for 10 on the season. And he drills it to make it 10-0 Tulane. Kick off your Sunday with NFL Countdown at 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. All access with Vikings excellent wide receiver Justin Jefferson. And then Monday Night Football, Saints and Bucks, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. And you got Peyton and Eli over on ESPN, too. Justin Jefferson, it's going to be a nice matchup when Ahmad Sauce Gardner, former American Defensive Player of the Year a season ago, is having a sensational year for the Jets. That might be one of the best individual matchups of the day tomorrow. Mr. Pass, Justin Jefferson, and Sauce Gardner. Fun little matchup there at the Vikes and the uh, Jets. And what a great season the Jets have had so far, despite having to bench their former number two overall pick. Mike White lit it up last week. Just outside a minute to go here in the opening quarter. See if UCF can start establishing a run game. Again, they're seventh in the country in rushing coming into this one. Ryan O'Keefe is very dangerous with the ball in his hand, so he elects to return it. And O'Keefe right on cue. Pushed out of bounds, but he did cross the 30. Out at the 35. The best wins this year for the Knights against Georgia Tech. The win here in New Orleans was probably their biggest win. They also beat Cincinnati. We talked about how heck, what a great team they've been running the ball, about 244 per game, 336 in the win against Tulane. They've been here before. If they win today, it would be their fourth New Year's Six Bowl in 10 years. They won the Fiesta and the Peach Bowl. Gus Malzahn in his second year after eight years at Auburn. And here is Isaiah Bowser. Past the 40 to the 41, and in talking with Melzon yesterday, it was a lot different than previous conversations we've had with Coach Melzon. Very buttoned up, very serious, but he said, look, we, I really enjoy what I'm doing right now. I'm in the right place. We're going to the Big 12. We feel really good about where this program can go, who we can recruit, what we can do in the transfer portal. But also, his wife had a major health scare in January. It gave him a lot of perspective. Thankfully, she's doing well now, but he said it was really scary back in January. Here comes an end around to Xavier Townsend, and he's cut down at the 50-yard line. What a great tackle by Macon Clark. Still a gain of eight. First down, but it could have been a lot more if not for Clark. That's exactly right, Dave. Really well set up. Nice job getting out in front, throwing blocks. A lot of green grass out in front. The quality open field tackle, saving what could have been extremely explosive play that's the end of the first quarter here in New Orleans 10 nothing Tulane leading after one in the American Championship game and we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations We have another championship game for you tonight on ABC. It is the ACC title game between number nine Clemson and 23rd ranked North Carolina. Welcome back to the AAC championship on ABC presented by Arby's. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville in New Orleans on a very warm December day. Temperature mid to upper 70s. We had a little rain earlier. Very humid as you would imagine. Here's Isaiah Bowser getting the carry on first down and into two-lane territory for the 46, brought down by Nick Anderson. Anderson and Dorian Williams, the top tacklers. They're the two inside linebackers for the Green Wave. The heart and soul of this defense, one and two, and two of the outstanding leaders that they have as well. A lot of experience. Nick Anderson, really good tackler in his own right. Helped make this the number one scoring defense in the league. Here's the transfer from Northwestern again. Bowser pushing the pile down to the 42. 
four more yards. It'll bring up third down and two. UCF, after coming out throwing the ball, either that or quarterback run, we're seeing a lot of handoffs. We saw the reverse for an eight-yard run at the end of the first quarter. Slowing down as well. Not that up-tempo that we see sometimes with Gus Malzahn, but boy, Bowser, this one like to put him also in the Wildcat direct snap at times. He is 6'1", 220-plus, and a physical downhill bruising back. We haven't really seen R.J. Harvey either since he fumbled on that first drive. First down for Bowser. Down to the 31. Gain of 12 for Isaiah Bowser. In the top 20 in the country in rushing touchdowns with 13 this year. We typically talk about him just lowering the shoulder running through people. It's the vision and cut to the right. He sees it open up and a nice job getting in the open field and moving the chains on third and short. Much more successful on first and second down on this drive too. Give him a manageable line to gain on third. Yep, now they're down to the 32. Here's the 12th run. Bowser off the left side and he gets tripped by Anderson. Big hit at the 34, or excuse me, at the 29. Gain of three on the play for Bowser. Second team all conference. He graduated from Northwestern a year ago. He's also got a touchdown pass on the season. Short yardage red zone in particular. We're seeing him all throughout on this drive, but that's really, we like to call his number. A lot of trust with this veteran back. And we give it to him again, and coming down is Jarius Monroe, the corner to make the stick. Only a gain of one. Monroe started only four games during the regular season, but was the first team on conference. He took over as starter at the end of October. Right here, you're going to see Chris Hampton call the corner blitz off the edge. Knives in. A really nice tackle on that Bowser cutback. Here's the true freshman quarterback in for the first time, Dave. Yep, Thomas Castellanos, who has a rushing touchdown. They also say he's got the best arm amongst the quarterbacks. He runs it here, and he's close to a first down and third and six. Tackled by Eric Hicks. Looks like he'll beat just short. And Plumley's coming back in, along with other offensive players, for fourth down. Raved about that freshman quarterback yesterday. Explosiveness as a runner. Big arm, smooth delivery. Comes in for just that third down. Nice pickup. I feel like this is where you call the number of Isaiah Bowser. Big bruising back. Would have been about a 40-yard field goal try from here, and their kickers only missed once all year, but they're going to go for it on fourth down and one. And keeping it is Plumley, and he stumbles, and I think came up short. Macon Clark tripped him up. They're going to measure, but it looked... No, nope, now they're going to say first down too late. So no need for the measurement. He's short. In fact, he may have even lost a yard based on how they're spotting it. They turn it over on down. The read zone, and he makes the right read, but it's just an excellent job effort from the backside. Macon Clark comes in with the arm, and a huge stop on fourth down to get Tolane the ball back. Dad? Take a look at the Taco Bell Lip Moss student section. Student sections across the country competing to be the Lip Moss student section of the year all season long. The Omen Stadium seats about 30,000. This venue opened in 2014. They used to play at the Superdome for four decades. Well, this is a great venue and a full stadium today. The AAC Championship. Pratt off play action. Fires over the middle. Incomplete. Trying to hit Deuce Watts. It'll be second and ten. Big drive here for Tulane after UCF turned it over on downs. You have to wonder about the health of John Rice Plumley, the quarterback for UCF. Just doesn't have that burst. We've been accustomed to seeing. We know he's got the hamstrings, been nursing it since the last time they played here against Tulane when he initially tweaked it, retweaked it, aggravated it last week against USF, but it's been held in check here. In that fourth down play, you just don't see normally he gets that. You don't see him get tackled as Pratt looking like Plumley there running the ball. Gains about eight brought down by Jarvis Ware. Gonna bring up third down and short. Michael Pratt is not shy away from contact as he hits that downhill. Finishes falling forward. 
Here he goes split out wide now when they come in with their Wildcat package. Pay close attention to him because he doesn't just stand out there. He'll block somebody. And so Spears, the Wildcat quarterback here. And they're checking it with him. You don't often see the Wildcat quarterback checking. Stopped by UCF at the line of scrimmage. Gain of about a half yard, but it's fourth down. Expect Willie Fritz got a punt here. On his own side of the field, it's a huge stop for UCF. Good push inside. They're staying on the field here, Dusty. The offense wow. is. Wow. You got a 10 0 lead. This is really dangerous, obviously, but we see it a ton now in college football. Back sneak. Unless they just try to draw UCF. Nope, they don't. And I don't think Pratt got it. He got drilled and stood up as he tried to go off right guard. And UCF is going to have the ball deep in two lane territory. Walter Yates, a backup fifth-year linebacker, transferred from Savannah State, was the first guy in there to stand up the quarterback the and the Knights take over. It's line the line surge game. inside, first Matthew UCF. Alexander, Lee Hunter, the big boys in the middle. They get pushed, and you mentioned it, 27, Walter Yates over the top, nowhere for Michael Pratt to go. And Willie Fritz rolls the dice on fourth down. And a huge stop for the Knights to get the football back in great field position. Huge, huge sequence right there for UCF. And they're going to Thomas Castellanos again here for this first down play. He ran it earlier. We talked about Plumley just doesn't look 100%. Going to hand it off to Bowser. This is the 13th consecutive run play called by Gus Malzahn. It's a gain of about six. And if you're just joining us, the normal backup quarterback, even though Castellanos has played some this year, the normal backup is Mikey Keen. Whenever Plumlee's been hurt this year, which has been several times, Keen has come in, but Keen's not available today by choice. We were told that he wanted to keep his red shirt, so he did not even suit up today. Here's Castellanos, and he has to complete the Baker. Big hit by Macon Clark. But it's a first down catch to the 20 yard line, a gain of five. With strong hands by Baker to go up and catch that football. But back to your point, kind of a crazy turn of events. Mikey Keene's played his four games, wants his red shirt. Thought he'd want to be out here with his team, but he elects not to want to play. Now we've got a true freshman out here trying to help lead this team to a championship. It's Bowser inside the 15th. I mean, sometimes you see that in bowl games, but right. this is a conference championship game. And he meant so much to get them here. Came in the Cincinnati game, helped lead them to that win. Played great, started the whole game against Memphis, came back in, helped lead them to a victory uh, a week ago against South Florida. And now right here with a chance to win a championship, he elects not to want to play in the game. We are told he is healthy. Bowser down to a 11. He'll be short of the line to gain. Keep Cooper there defensively. So it'll be third down and short. And again, we were told that Castellanos has a package. So don't know right now if this is the package or if Plumlee's shaken up. And so they're just keeping Castellanos out there. Probably the full run game package and a limited passing game package. Take inside zone and the quarterback can keep it if he needs. And a good play at the line of scrimmage by Larry Brooks to take down the running back, Isaiah Bowser. And he's short. It's fourth down. You just went for it on fourth down and didn't get it. Should they take the points here? I don't think Gus is taking the points here. I think Gus is going to go big personnel. And he's going to go for this first down. But man, if you don't get it, that's twice now. You would have been in, in a position to get at least something out of a drive. You come away with nothing. I understand that. It's going to be Bowser, direct snap. Expect to see him over the left side. Heavy tight end personnel off the left. Bowser picks a hole, and it's the right one. We got a first down. It'll be first and goal at about the eight-yard line of Tulane, midway through the second quarter. The Knights trying to get on the board for the first time today. With hesitation here by Bowser, you've got an outstanding center, 55, Matthew Lee, one of the best guards in the league. The right guard, 77, Paole, first team all-conference behind those big guys. Castellanos still in there, hands off for Bowser. Down to the five for a gain of three. Yeah, we haven't seen R.J. Harvey since the fumble. Heavy dose of Isaiah Bowser. Since that, Bowser now has 12 carries for 51 yards. 
Well, still no Plumley. Yeah, and guys, without Plumley, you got Castellanos, a true freshman. No Mikey Keene. So if they got into a bind, R.J. Harvey, who's fumbled today, would be their third quarterback option. They put Castellanos under center on second and goal, and it's a jet sweep. Townsend, touchdown! True freshman Xavier Townsend on the jet sweep takes it in, and UCF is on the board. Cashing in after the big defensive stop. Huge touchdown here for the Knights, right back in this ball game. Essentially not much of any passing game whatsoever. Gus Malzahn, the creativity in the run game, finds a way to get this offense on the board. Questionable decision by Willie Fritz, although other coaches do it. Going for it on fourth down from inside his own 35. He didn't get it. UCF quickly goes down the field and scores a touchdown. And they're back in the ball game with 6.48 to go in the first half. It's now 10-7 to Lane after Townsend's touchdown run. The American Athletic Conference Championship presented by Arby's on ABC is brought to you by Burger King. Now, Sean King was such a good player here at Tulane at 98 team. Won the Conference USA title. That's their last conference championship. When you won the title back then, you went to the Liberty Bowl. It's a little bit different if they win this game. The victor goes to the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, the New Year's Six Bowl game as the highest ranked group of five team. Awesome bowl game there at Jerry World. Great opportunity for one of these teams to put their talents on display. January 2nd, one of the big time New Year's Six Bowls. And a big momentum shift in this game with UCF getting the touchdown after Tulane turned it over on downs inside its 35. Take a look at that touchdown that we saw drawn up by Gus Malzahn and offensive coordinator Chip Lindsey. So Xavier Towns is going to be over, lined up essentially tight right there almost as a wing. He's going to come back around, going to get the football, and really it's played well. You've got six Darius Hodges, 11 Jarius Monroe, the corner, but they're both too far outside. Somebody's got to close that gap. There's a lot of space in there. It's an excellent cutback by Townsend as he puts his foot in the ground, gets north and south, and he finds the end zone. Well played there by Tulane, but they got too far outside, created too much space, and the speedy wide receiver made a pay. So it's 10-7 with Tulane's offense back on the field with the sun out now here in New Orleans. Spears, nice juke, shreds, and up to about the 40-yard line. Boy, Spears is going to be in the NFL when he's done playing here at Tulane. That was a great move. Saw some strength there as well. 16-yard gain and an injured UCF player, Justin Hodges, is down for the Knights. Back in a moment. If there's anyone here who knows why they... Well, Dan, Kevin, back in studio time now for a mayhem moment. Brought to you by All-State SEC Championship. We got a field goal block, but guys, it's a live ball. Yeah, really good first drive by LSU, but they didn't finish it off on special teams, Dan. Yeah, they pick it up. They weren't aware you got to cover the kick. It crosses the line of scrimmage. It's return returnable by the, the uh, Georgia, the defense. Heads up play. Picks it up, runs it back for a touchdown. LSU's running to the sideline. Chris Smith, 95 yards of the house. They're up 21-7 Georgia. Dave, Dusty, and Tom, back to you. All right, guys, it's 10-7 here, two-lane leading. And the football on its 41-yard line, six and a half minutes remaining. Here's Spears running to the left, and again, lowers the boom on the defender. Jarvis Ware, pick up of just a couple. So those guys talked about the Georgia game, and obviously earlier on ABC, TCU loses to Kansas State. TCU a playoff team. To me, they are, yes. Look, I think you go 12-0 in the regular season, tough way to lose today in overtime. They get stuffed on the goal line at the end, lose by a field goal, tip your cap to Kansas State, but 12-0 throughout the regular season. I couldn't put a two-loss regular season Alabama team in over them. I think the expectation is Ohio State goes in over USC, but to me, TCU still moves on. We'll find out tomorrow at noon on ESPN exclusive reveal. Pass to the sideline is caught for a first down by Wyatt. Wyatt has been very involved so far here. In this first half, in of 14 on the play. 
He's already got four catches. The route is outstanding by White. The comeback shuts it down. And the ball delivered perfectly on target as Brandon Adams was playing back, continued in his backpedal, running, and a wide open Shea Wyatt to move the chains. The coaches say he's the most complete receiver. Really good blocker, good teammate, good leader. Brad changing things up. Junior quarterback from Boca Raton, Florida. He's going to throw it here. Long pass this way. Caught by Lawrence Keyes. Inside the 20. Keyes outrunning the defense and into the end zone for the touchdown. 43 yards for the Notre Dame transfer. South Bend transferred back home and gets a huge play here in the American title game. Well, it's just a terrible angle on the football. And Devontae Brown's been their best corner throughout the course of the season. Bad angle. A nice job by Keys to get up the field to the sidelines. Heels to the field as the Green Wave find the end zone again. Point after. Makes it 17 to 7. Quick response by Tulane after UCF scored. UCF got back in the ball game, and a quick answer here by Tulane. We got a good one here in the Big Easy. With DirecTV, I can get left. Kevin on halftime report minutes away. Booger, Dan, and Kevin here in studio. Highlights of a crazy Big 12 overtime thriller, and TCU was stunned. Yeah, they were stunned by a physical Kansas State team. Deuce Vaughn just really took over the game, and they controlled the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and, and you take the ball out of Max Duggan's hand on the yep. last two plays yeah, of the game, yep. give him the ball, let him score the touchdown, and keep playing and get to the champion. So what does that now mean for the playoff? We will discuss that, of course. Highlights coming your way. Back to you, Dave. And you guys already heard Dusty say he thinks TCU should still be in. Hard, hard to disagree. Got to think. They got to be. They're in. Absolutely. There's the kickoff. Taken on the one yard line by O'Keefe. And O'Keefe runs out of real estate. Down he goes at the 22. We will find out tomorrow on ESPN. The exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups with Reese Davis and company, also the New Year's Six Bowl games, the final top 25 rankings. The winner of this game will play in a New Year's Six game, the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. That's tomorrow, noon Eastern, ESPN, and the ESPN app. Love the selection show, all the talk, all the matchups, Dave. Love bowl season, get all the matchups, and back and forth. Can't wait for tomorrow. It's going to be fun. And if UCF makes it, Two to your sixth game, it might come down to the play of the guy at quarterback right now. Thomas Castellanos, who makes a nice move to at least avoid a sack. He gets a couple of yards. We were told that he would play. I don't know that the coaches expected it to be this much. And we're assuming at this point that part of the reason is that Plumley just not 100%. And again, Mikey Keene not dressed. This is this would have been game five for Keene. Would have burned his red shirt. So he is not suited up today, even though he's played a lot of games this year. Castellanos throwing out in space to Richardson, who made the first man miss and runs out of bounds at the 25 for a gain of three. I think it's going to change the way you see Chris Hampton call this defense. I think he could be much more aggressive, not to have to respect the passing game as much until Castellanos proves it. Take a look there at John Rice Plumley. New coming in, he was banged up, had the hamstring, tried to give it a go. You can tell in that fourth and short, doesn't have the burst he typically does. Now a big, big ask for this true freshman. Castellanos taking off, nowhere to go. Dumped at the 26 by Corey Platt, and UCF will have to punt. Excellent job there, implementing a spy, Corey Platt, you mentioned, right over the football, just spying the true freshman. Three-man rush on the outside. They do an awesome job, really collapsing this pocket. You see Darius Hodges getting the push inside, Platt right there, and a good stop for the Green Wave defense. There's the punt by McCarthy. Jackson under it, and fair catch made at the 32-yard line. And now a quick word from Cheezit. Cheesiest Jane for the cheesiest cheese. Give me that. You don't need it. To be the cheesiest, gotta snatch that chain. Wait, well, how'd you? We need another chain. Cheese it, feeling the cheesiest. 
And we talked about John Rice Plumley not being 100%. We watched Caleb Williams last night fight through clearly what was a leg injury to try to stay in that game. But everything changed for USC when he got hurt. You wonder, has everything changed for UCF if Plumley can't return? His counterpart, Michael Pratt, the quarterback for Tulane, has played a terrific first half. Got a run, Tyje Spears here. Out to the 36 yard line, a game of three or four. The 11th carry already for Spears. 35 attempts just a week ago in the win over Cincinnati. And Pratt's been excellent today, but no pressure at all from UCF. They have not come close to disrupting him, getting off his spot. Did a nice job hitting him quite a bit in the first matchup, particularly Ricky Barber, five inside. He was excellent. Pratt unscathed here today. Three minutes to go. They have two timeouts to work with. Over the middle. Caught, and a big hit. The ball comes out. They're going to say incomplete pass. Boy, Shane Wyatt got drilled by Wilson. That was going to be a first down if not for Devon Wilson, the Georgia transfer, fifth-year senior from Miami, Florida. Once again, really good round here by Shane Wyatt. Pass on time, but a big hit. Shoulder into the chest. Clearly clean, huge hit there by Wilson, dislodging that football. And give Wilson credit in an era where it's so hard to make that play anymore as a defender, to get the head out of the way and not attack the guy. Very well done. So now it's third down and six. Trying to set up a screen, and that was good defense that time by Selisgar. We talked about the lack of pressure previously, but Selisgar ruined that play. They could never get it set up, and it's fourth down. Right on cue. UCF needed to create some pressure, get that ball out quick. They wanted to get Spears into the, into the field and get him set up on that screen. Never enough time for it to develop. Excellent job by Selisgar getting off the football and forcing the incompletion for Pratt. Ristan Esnard on to punt. He's not the normal punter, but he does sometimes. This is short, and it's pulled in at the 31-yard line by Wilson. He wasn't even the main returner, but he goes over there, makes the catch, and it'll be UCF ball with 2.36 to go, and the Knights have all their timeouts. Time now for today's Aflac trivia question. We talked about this earlier, that Tulane's just the 16th ever in the AP poll area anyway to win 10. One year after losing 10, who's the last team to do it? It's, I think, if I... You're talking to me? I think it's another American Conference team that did it. And I want to say it was like three years ago, four years ago. And UCF went from 0-12 to 12-0, but that was a two-year span. It wasn't a one-year span. Could have been Memphis? Castellano still in the game at quarterback, across the 35, rushing for about five yards. Lummy Young with the tackle. R.J. Harvey back in the game. We have not seen him much at all here today. Fumbled early. Castellano's in trouble. Wrapped up. And sacked at the 25-yard line. Patrick Jenkins hung on for dear life and got him to the ground for a 12-yard loss. Patrick Jenkins, second team all conference this season. Watch the hands yards. work. Excellent job Tulane. working his hands. 30 seconds. Working on 30 71, seconds. Tylen Grable. A big sack. Castellanos did everything he could to try to stay up. Grab onto whatever you can if you're Patrick Jenkins to get the quarterback to the ground. Tulane takes a timeout. So big third down at 13. They want some time on the clock if and when they get the ball back. All right, let's go ahead and answer the Aflac trivia question. I I feel like it's Navy. It's Shipman. The last team, other than Tulane, to win 10 the year after they lost 10. Let's see uh, who it is. His name. It's you. You cheated. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Just because I get it right, they just think I'm cheating. You are. No faith, no trust. No, nope. there's, there's a lot of trust. I trust that you cheated. <laughs> I trust that you do an excellent job reading all the notes that you're distributed. Biggest win increase in the country. TCU and USC both lost, and they were tied for second. Will Tulane go down today? It's a 10 point lead. Third down of 13 for UCF. Castellanos. Technically the third string quarterback in trouble, sacked again at the 15 yard line, this time by Keith Cooper.
Well, this offensive line is struggling to protect right now. Inside Final. game, Cooper was Final the charge, looper, time out of the half. and he gets home. Too late. 30 seconds. Gets another sack on back-to-back -back plays. Two minutes. Two, zero, as you'd zero. expect, Tulane electing to take a timeout, give Michael Pratt and the offense as much time as they can to try to tack on more points here before half. I'll tell you, Dusty, the absence of Mikey Keene's now really starting to rear its ugly head because this offense cannot function and they cannot function and they're clearly one dimensional. And, and especially if there's any more points to get at it. Yeah. Right? Because the further you move away, you gotta get away from running the football. You need to try to throw the ball, and that's just you're asking a lot of a true freshman in this spot. I mean, it's just yeah. you know, this team has really been put in a difficult situation. You give Mikey Keene a ton of credit for helping them get to this point. The fact that he's not there and able to help this team in this spot, I man, it's just difficult putting pressure on this offense and on a very young quarterback in a big spot. So Mitch McCarthy on the punt from inside his five-yard line. And Jackson got the punt! But somehow controlled it. Oh my goodness, it looked like that was going to be out for sure. And Kobe Hudson looked like he was going to recover it easily. Somehow Jackson, that late signal, muffed it and it got tipped right back to him, right off his fingertips. Hudson couldn't make the play. Huge missed opportunity there by Hudson and UCF. Game-changing type of play right there at his fingertips, but he couldn't pull it in. And it wasn't just that he couldn't pull it in. The fact that the ball bounced right back no. to Jackson was something you don't see very often. When it might be your day. So a minute 52 remaining. Tulane out of timeouts. But plenty of time here. Jackson in trouble on that wide receiver screen. And he loses about three yards. If Gus smells on, calls a timeout. Nope, we'll let the clock move here. Traymond Morris Brash made the tackle first time we called his name. First team, all conference, Richmond, Virginia, senior. Great pursuit to the football there by the Knights defense. Second and 13. Pratt with time. Another long throw. Jackson wide open. Easily gets the first down and into UCF territory to the 47 yard line with a minute 18 to go. Well, the two-lane offensive line is having their way. Excellent pocket protection for Pratt to survey the field. And then Justin Hodges, he gets turned around and lost. Completely loses sight of his wide receiver, Jackson. And he's wide open for a big catch and a nice run after the grab. Pratt is just so poised. Sees the field so well. Yeah, really impressive. Junior quarterback for Tulane. Gonna throw it here on first down. Looking over the middle, knocked down. Ware stepped in front of the tight end, Alex Bauman, and knocked the ball away from him. Second down. Nice break, Jarvis Ware. Perfect position, comes inside, gets that left arm in, creates the pass breakup. Nice play by the fifth year senior safety. Transfer from Missouri, coming off two knee surgeries, but He's had a very good year. The coaches said he's a pleasant surprise because they weren't sure what they were going to get on him this year, given his health. On second and ten, Pratt again downfield, and it's juggled and secured at the 30-yard line by Lawrence Keyes. Gain of 17, first down, too late. And they're going with some tempo here, just outside a minute to go. In good protection, nice pocket. A strike once again for Pratt. Pratt taking a shot. That was going to be a back shoulder throw, but Shea Wyatt was running downfield with Corey Thornton in coverage, and the clock stopped with 55 seconds to go in the half, second and 10. Different page there at his receiver. Clearly, Pratt thought Wyatt was going to shut it down, work back to the football. Wyatt had different thoughts. Dusty, look at this defensive front for UCF. They're gassed, and the hands on the hips. They were struggling to get kind of into their stance when you saw some tempo from Tulane. And remember, talking to Travis Williams, the defensive coordinator, he felt like they got worn out last week. They got to get a stop here. Brad on second and 10. Steps up, and Brad down at the 32 by Celescar. He's made a lot of plays so far. UCF. 
He's got a high motor. He's a great effort. Big stop right there, setting up this third and long. And again, Tulane already used its timeouts. Clock inside, 40 seconds remaining. Brad on third down, a long pressure off the edge. Gets rid Going for Bohan and Morris Brash almost got to Pratt. It's fourth down, 27 seconds to go. It would be about a 48-yard field goal. Valentino and Brosio's long on the season is 47. And he's 10 of 11 on the year. Just one miss. To be a 49-yard try to extend the lead to 13. Let's see Gus try to ice the kicker here in the spot. Yep, here comes the timeout. First charge, time out of the half. UCF, 30 seconds. Well, this season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. It'll be interesting. Dusty and Luke's both gave their opinions, and I'm in agreement. TCU should still get in the college football play. I'm very curious what Coach Mullen, Booker, and Kevin have to say at halftime about that. And also, who should be in now that USC is out? And Again, it seems like most people feel it should be Ohio State with the one loss just coming a week ago to Michigan. But the committee told us that was their 15. They're the next team up. I don't know how, you know, if USC is out of that four slot with that performance last night, I'd love to see Kayla Williams stay healthy, but the defensive performance was very, very difficult to watch. I had to give Utah Kyle Whittingham a ton of credit. As a physical football team, they felt disrespected. They went in there edgy. They took the fight to USC, but a USC defense, it's been struggling all year. I do think they'd be out, but naturally wouldn't have to be Ohio State. You would think. Oh, wow. This is why, they're, by the way, they took the field goal team off, so they're going to go for it. I, I, this is why the expanded playoffs is a beautiful thing. Would you want to play Utah right now? Uh, no. <laughs> no. I'd love to see them keep getting a chance to play and compete. Big call right here for Willie Fritz. Pratt going for it, fourth down and 12 instead of a 49-yard field goal try. Pratt hit as he throws the ball, flutters, and it's intercepted at the 20-yard line. Returning it is Devontae Brown and knocked out of bounds with 18 seconds to go at the 43-yard line. Morris Brash got close on third down. He got home on fourth down, and Pratt throws just his fifth interception of the season. Well, he's the best defensive lineman UCF has. We've been waiting for his name. His defensive coordinator loves him. Watch him work off the edge, fights through the block. Gonna see Spears try to block and fights through, gets the arm just as Pratt tries to deliver the football, and it's a gift for Brown. And UCF gets the stop and now has the football with 18 seconds left. We'll see how Gus tries to play this out, but and if I'm him, I'm trying to do whatever I can to get some points on the board here before half. Yeah, they you see Pratt thereafter, not happy with Morris Brash. Back and forth between those two. Again, two timeouts left for UCF. They have a kicker who has attempted a 64-yarder. They're just going to run the ball here. Richardson trying to get out of bounds. He stayed in. Got him out. He got the first down, though, so the clock will stop to reset the chains, but it's going to start on the ready for play. If you're Gus Mills, I need to the first down in bounds. He wanted to make sure he got the first down. He is in Second charge the timeout two lane territory now. UCF. 30 seconds. Clock at nine seconds left, one timeout. You got to figure you got one more play and then a field goal try, maybe two and a field goal try. So do you think the reason Tulane didn't kick the field goal was because if a miss, they didn't want to give UCF good field position? Because obviously with the interception, they just did, right? I'm sure that Willie Fritz is thinking, well, worst case scenario, Pratt, they'll you know, get to throw an incompletion and they take over at the 30 not near midfield, which they did thanks to that return by Devontae Brown. Well, Ambrosio made a 47-yarder at Cincinnati, and it barely went over. Maybe they're just saying that that's out of his range. They've got a better opportunity to make the fourth down, and they do make that field goal. Uh, Gus Malzahn told us yesterday, Colton Boomer, even though he attempted a 64-yarder, really only comfortable with him around 45. Tulane's got three guys backed up about 30 yards away from the football. Castellano steps up, the clock is moving, he's got to get rid of the ball. It's caught and out of bounds inside the 40 with one second left is Baker. 
So from here, it's going to be about a 57-yard field goal try. Again, they tried a 64-yarder. Gus Balzon's going to call that last time out here. The offense is on the field right now. He likes his field goal kicker, guys. Well, we just said, though, that he wasn't comfortable with him really except the about 45. Was he he catch? take the chance. And the receiver was out of bounds. What the previous play percentages under further review. You have to say that a field goal try is better than a Hail Mary, right? I'm sure Baker gets out of bounds. But even, even if he doesn't, you have, you have the timeout. So there's one second left. I'm sure they're looking at the clock here, too, to make sure that there's one second left and that time did not expire in the first half. So they're going to go look further at this. And you directly asked Coach Malzahn yesterday about his kicker and where he felt comfortable. I mean, we're not in that range yet. We're not close. Correct. But, again, Correct. they tried a 64-yarder. Would you like the percentages of that over a Hail Mary? I mean, if, if 57 he, from if here. If he can't make it 57, then I like the percentage of anything. <laughs> if you can't make it for 57, so again, they're looking to make sure that even if he's down there, Malzahn called the timeout. And actually, they, they may have to put time back on the clock because look, it, the play was over. It went down to one. It was at three seconds. So I, they should put time back on the clock. Not that it really matters at this point because you got one snap left. The other thing, too, is to make sure that he secured the ball. It did come out. Again, I thought that he could, well, I don't know. Did he complete the catch? I thought he would. Initially lied that he did, but to make a football move before going to the ground. Looked like he did, right? That's what it looked like. It looked like he had. Uh, as he goes to the ground, though, he does not survive the ground. He didn't wow. complete the process of the catch. I guess man. not. I, looking at that they're again. They're going to overturn this. So then you're moving the ball back. They probably put time back on the clock. They are moving it back, so they're going to say yep. a complete pass. So now you have to go with a Hail Mary. You don't want to ask me what I think about a 66-yard <laughs> field goal? <laughs> okay, they tried, they tried the 64. He did miss that. His only miss on the season. After further review, it was an incomplete pass. The receiver not to the ground. It'll be second and ten from the 49-yard line on the left hash, plus 49. Please set the game clock to three seconds. Three seconds. Well, they did tell us that Castellanos has the best arm of their quarterbacks, even though he's also their best athlete. And he's going to have to hoist it here about 55, 60 yards. Tulane has three players hovering around the goal line. UCF will get the ball to start the second half, regardless of what happens here. Castellanos lets it fly. It's a line drive into the end zone, incomplete. And that ends the first half. Tulane 30 minutes away from its first New Year's Six Bowl game. The Green Wave leading by 10 at halftime. We'll send it to Kevin Booger and Coach Mullen for the Capital One Halftime Report after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Welcome back to New Orleans and the AAC Championship on ABC, presented by Arby's as part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. This is the American Conference on ESPN. Tulane leading 17-7 over UCF with one half to go and a spot in the Cotton Bowl at stake. Let's take a look at today's hardest working player brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. How about the quarterback of Tulane, Michael Pratt, was excellent in the first half. Recognizes man-to-man -man coverage, knows he has Shea Wyatt on the wheel route, perfectly placed football. I love the recognition of the coverage. Sees the corner come down, be the flat player, gets the football to Deuce Watts before the safety get over the top. Huge play, setting up another score for Tulane. Second team all-conference quarterback, one of the great leaders of this football team, Michael Pratt, excellent in the first half with 217 and two touchdowns. On the other side, John Rice Plumley has barely played, does not look 100%. Thomas Castellanos has played more than Plumley in this game, and Mikey Keene 
We are told he is healthy. We were also told that it was his decision not to play today because had he played, he would have burned a red shirt. But it's a guy that has started a lot of games for UCF, won a lot of games for them, played very well when he's been out there, but not available for his team on Championship Saturday with a spot for the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic on the line. Here's Lawrence Keyes on the return. And he's out across the 20. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville down on the field. So if you're UCF, obviously you're on defense first, but when you get the ball back, what changes does Gus Malzahn have to make to try to manufacture some offense here with essentially the third string quarterback? Well, if Plumley comes back in, can he just be a thrower, not a runner? That's one question. If it is Castellanos, I think you got to do a better job moving the pocket, getting him on the perimeter, giving him some more run pass options. He's kind of a sitting duck back there in the pocket. So I think you can move the pocket, allow him a little bit more of an option to be a runner or a passer if he is the choice here in the second half. AJ Spears, the running back for Tulane. He's going to get the carry here. It's his 12th attempt on the day. And nowhere to go. Maybe a one yard gain. Morris Brash on the tackle. Let's check in with Tom. Yeah, guys, and Dusty, I think Coach uh, Malzahn agrees with you, just walking into the locker room uh, with him. I did ask him about John Rice Plumley playing, even if it's just as a passer. He said, yes, that's an option. Because what I got to do as a coach is I got to do a better job of getting him out of the pocket, creating some opportunities where if not there in the passing game, he can use his athleticism. And oh, by the way, you guys will love this. Willie Fritz told me, yeah, I let analytics get the best out of me on that fourth and one on our own 35. And it cost him seven points. UCF went right down and scored. Completion to Will Wallace. Wrapped up after a one-yard gain by Corey Thornton. So, bring up third down and nine. We have not seen Tulane go three and out. And a chance for UCF's defense to come up big here. They've only given up 21 points per game in the season, already surrendering 17 through the first half. They're going to have to be stellar in this second half to pull this comeback and win a conference championship. You know you're limited offensively, and the defense is going to have to really up their level of play. Showing pressure here on this third down. They back off. Pratt from the pocket delivers. And looks like a first down. Alex Spalman, the true freshman, on third down and eight. Able to move the sticks out to the 35-yard line. Again, good protection. Once again, Michael Pratt, no problem. Locates his tight end. The freshman Spalman open in that soft spot in the zone. Nice job catching that football, getting upfield to move the sticks. Tulane trying to win its conference for the first time since 1998, back when they were in the Conference USA. Their first American regular season championship. And they'll be going bowling for just the fourth time in the last 20 years. A win, and they'll be again in a New Year's Six game. Spears running straight ahead, pushing the pile out to the 40-yard line. Spears, a guy that missed most of the COVID year two years ago due to injury, played really well last year. This season, over 1,200 yards. He's also one of the team leaders, and not just being vocal. One of the ways he exudes leadership, according to coaches, is he'll clean up the locker room. And what I mean is he doesn't just pick up trash. He'll vacuum the locker room. Unbelievable teammate player. In and both Jaquan Jackson. Can he come by? Take, take pride in that. No question. <laughs> He's Phenomenal football player, Ty J. Spears. Gets it again here, looking for the cutback, and he's lost at midfield. Look at that, Spears, inside the 40. He hurdles his own guy, and Spears is gone. Touchdown, Tulane. They got to clean up some Tulane. Offensive lineman off the turf who were running downfield for Spears that time, trying to block him. They were exhausted. We talked about the counter, they love it. Will Wallace, the tight end, is going to pull back across and get a key block. And then the rest is this Tajay Spears being outstanding. Making people miss, running through arm tackles. So good in the open field. A hurdle here or there. What a run by the American Conference Offensive Player of the Year. A 60-yard touchdown, and now with a third-string quarterback in UCF come back from down 17. Huge score for the Green Wave. It is the 15th rushing touchdown on the season for Ty J. Spears.
If you already know that a blend of tender, marbled Wagyu beef makes the best burger, good for you. Arby's Wagyu Steakhouse Burger is back. You beef genius? Arby's, we have the meat. Save 10% on Target gift cards with Target Circle. The college football playoff semifinals. And the college football playoff national championship on ESPN. been an unbelievable season for Tulane. A year ago, just two victories, two and ten. Hurricane Ida played a big role in that as it displaced Tulane for a month. They were in Birmingham and they didn't even have an indoor facility. They had to go to Tuscaloosa to practice when the weather was bad. Touchback that'll come out to the 25. And then Tulane turns it around. Plus eight. Two wins to ten wins. The defense has been outstanding this season and tonight. Such a remarkable story, and it has been about the defense. Number one scoring defense in the conference. Dorian Williams playing some spy on Plumlee early, and this has been the tactic. The mobile quarterback killed them in the first time around. Not going to happen today. Here's Corey Platt also spying Castellanos. An outstanding effort that first half. Limiting this night's rushing attack and limiting the quarterback's ability to run the football. And it is Castellano starting the second half at quarterback. They'll hand it off to Isaiah Bowser. And Bowser gets maybe three. Castellanos came in throwing just eight passes on the season. Six of those came against Temple. Tulane defense, top 20, points allowed. Giving up just seven today after giving up 38 to UCF when they first met. But again, it's John Rice Plumley. Rush for almost 200 yards in that game. He's not even playing in this one. Completely different offense without him at the helm. There's Bowser straight ahead. And he comes up a couple of yards short of the first down, 32. I, I'll tell you, the defensive coordinator, Chris Hampton, just a delight to talk to. So much excitement, so much good energy. Loves his players. You can just tell the joy out on his face. We sat with him yesterday how proud he was of this team. He told this group all the way back in fall camp, you got to be first or second in the league if you want to compete for a championship. He set a high bar. And his defense, they've lived up to it. Third down and two. Bowser stood up. Going to be close. I think he's short. Chris Hampton also, I think, is the first coach to come into our meeting room this year wearing Armani and, and Versace glasses. He's cool, man. He tells the players, his, he, like he told us, he said, I, I, I'm not married, I don't have kids, I'm married to football, and I love to shop. Yep. And he told his players that, and, but you're right, this is a bright young man that you could tell has a future as a head coach. Meanwhile, Nick Anderson, important player on defense for Chris Hampton, is hurt back in a moment. Fourth down. Let's take a look at the All-State playoff predictor. TCU's got to be in then. If 92% yes. chance. Okay, so if Ohio State makes it, is TCU three, or do we have Michigan Ohio State? I want Michigan Ohio State in the national semifinal. I'm not saying that Ohio State deserves to be ahead well, of TCU. I just want to see it again. Well, you know, they do not look at this and try to make matchups. No, I we know, know I that. Know, I know, of course. Um, I think TCU stays at three, Ohio State goes to four. Do you think that they right. think about it, though? Is it discussed, hey, do we want a rematch of a game that would just happen? Two weeks ago. But it's not supposed to come into play, but they are human beings. I'm sure it's at least somewhat brought up. Is it the end all be all? I don't know, but I, I think it stays just like that list was right there. Now Michigan still has to win. That's right. That's right. Plays Purdue tonight. Although they're in even if they lose. And then Ohio State. They're going for it here. Big fourth down. I say Bowser. Yeah. Well, catch quarterback. Fourth and one. Bowser got it. Out to the 40-yard line. That was a must-have. Obviously, Tulane would have taken over at the UCF 35, and I'm sure Gus Mel is out at this point thinking, I don't know how many possessions we're going to have. We don't know what our quarterback situation is going to be like. We have the ball now, and our defense is struggling. Let's keep it. The other issue is they don't have a way of creating explosives to flip the field either. Tulane loading up in the box. Yep. Castellanos back in. Hand it off to Bowser, and he is spun down at the line of scrimmage. One yard gain. Jesus Machado with the tackle, sophomore from Miami, Florida, second and long. 
job. We just saw Nick Anderson, one of the leaders and outstanding tacklers for this defense come off. Machado steps in. Now he comes in already when they go three linebacker look, so he can naturally fit right in. A good tackle around the line of scrimmage. They've only thrown the ball nine times. This will be number 10. Castellanos slings it, but it's dropped by Hudson. Should have caught it. Got to help your young quarterback out. Hudson could not. That would have put the ball at the 40 of Tulane. Missed opportunity here from Kobe Hudson, the Auburn transfer on that deep over route. He's open. And Castellanos with a nice pass, puts it right on him. You see Hudson allow that ball get to all the way to his body in a tough drop. Castellanos in trouble. Forced out of the pocket to his left. Throws high, incomplete. Going for Ryan O'Keefe, who's basically been taken out of this game. Maybe their best offensive player other than Plumley, and he's been a non-factor because they haven't really thrown the ball at all. We thought we might see him in the jet sweep game, but we haven't. Yeah, he's got such good speed, so good on the perimeter. Good coverage here by 31. Larry Brooks, the safety. Step for step there with O'Keefe. Pass sells high, but nowhere for Castellanos to find an open target. So now they punt on fourth down and eight. Field on the 11, Jackson. Up to the 15-yard line, and that's it. Now a quick word from Cheez-It. Cheese. I was feeling cute. I might delete these later. Don't delete them. I look good. Crop yourself out. My hair does look amazing. Cheez-It. Feeling the cheesiest. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Lugan, Bill in New Orleans with Tulane back on offense. You promised me a cheese it necklace before the season's over. <laughs> Better get that for me for Christmas. I'm going to be upset. Luke's ate it, but he had it ready to go. <laughs> You're getting nothing but coal, Dusty. There's Spears just had a 60 yard touchdown run of the last possession brought down by Jason Johnson. Spears has now carried it 15 times for just over 125 yards. That's 50 carries in the last two games. And he's just been out at all. He's been out there for every play. Even yeah. once he hadn't touched. He's a three down back. He's an excellent blocker. Catches the ball effortlessly out of the backfield. We've talked all throughout the game about his ability with the ball in his hands as a ball carrier. I mean, he really is the total package. Key piece for this football team. Louisiana native, one of nine children, and Spears might be gone again. And running defenders in midfield. Past the 30 and finally knocked out of bounds. The touchdown was a 60-yard run. That one goes for 57. Unfortunately, Spears is shaken up. He's closing it on 200 yards for the day. Right on cue with another explosive run. Excellent job. Jump cut, vision, and watch the burst. When he sees the open grass, he is gone. Acceleration as he puts his foot on the gas, running away from defenders. Big time play for Tajay Spears. Brandon Adams pushed him out of bounds. Landed on that left hip. And now Spears motioning to the crowd. The fans here start to sense a trip to Dallas. Still a quarter and a half to go, but they're in position to put more points on the board at the 26-yard line of UCF. Two-lane win would send them to the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic as the highest-ranked Group of Five champion. A lot of projections have USC as the opponent after the Trojans lost the Pac-12 championship to Utah last night. Clayton Johnson, his first carry, the first running back other than Spears to carry it. And that's because Spears got shaken up on the last play. And a gain of six. I'll tell you what, this Tulane offensive line starting to really impose their will. They've been good throughout the course of the day. Multiple tight end sets here. Talked about Will Wallace and his ability in the blocking game. Seen a little bit of Alex Bauman as well. Starting to lean on this front for the UCF Knights. You got Clayton Johnson in the backfield again along with Celestine. 
on second and four on the UCF 20 yard line. Celestine Turk puts his head down and he gets mobbed at the 18, about a yard short of a first down. Jeremiah Jean Baptiste in there first for UCF along with KD McDaniel. Good personnel coming in. Extra offensive line with Trey Tuggle. Comes in for their jumbo package along with a couple of tight ends. 13 personnel there. And with the extra offense alignment as well. Clayton Johnson is the deep back here on third down and two. And it's a pass play. Pratt got a man wide open. It's Will Wallace. He stumbles and then he fumbles the ball. And UCF appears to have it. Wow. A turnover inside the five. Recovered by Walter Yates. UCF not done defense. yet. First down UCF. You love the play design. Expecting heavy run on the inside. Play action. Wallace wide open in the flat. Watch this effort by 88. Josh Seliscar. All out effort to the football. Defense alignment not giving up. Gets in there. Punches that ball out. And gives UCF an opportunity and a chance. Excellent individual effort. Wilson, and Wilson was the first guy there. The ball started to come out. Selisgar came in, finished it off to poke it free. That's the type of player he is. I asked the defensive coordinator, Travis Williams, yesterday one of my first questions. How about the effort? 88 gives on film, and you saw it there to try to salvage an opportunity to come back in this game. But Castellanos and the offense backed up. The true freshman third string quarterback and a throw for deep in his own end. And almost picked off. Presley, the corner for Tulane, had a chance to intercept that ball. The receiver ran way downfield. Dorian Williams talked to him, talked about him from the onset. The best linebackers in this league. Comes downhill on the pressure. Nobody identifies him. He gets a big shot on Castellanos. Castellanos in trouble back of his end zone throws incomplete. Ryan O'Keefe, the intended target. You mentioned Dorian Williams. The coaches use Williams as some as a pitch to recruits because when Dorian Williams came to Tulane, he was 190 pounds. He's now 230. He's going to be an NFL draft pick, and they're hoping to get a lot more players like him. They, in fact, they bring a side-by-side -side picture along for their recruiting visits to show. He's a great example of the development that Willie Fritz and his staff have implemented here at Tulane. Third down and ten, an empty set. See if Tulane comes after the young quarterback. Castellanos going to run it. He got out of the end zone and pulled back. I think he's out, though. It'll be fourth down. No safety. Darius Hodges wrapped him up. And so UCF will have to punt from the back of its end zone, the very back. Running on the field. That's what right. progress is a one yard line. Like football as he was fourth coming down. to the ground. Fourth down. Oh, play. Great job by Hodges. Ruling on the field. There was four progress at the one yard line. Fourth down. Alec Collins. Previous play. Down before he is under further he review. He was out of the end zone, though, and the four progress was stopped, right? Previous play is under further Let me review. Let take a look at this because as he gets hit, he sits back and he try, delivers the football. They are going to look at this again. This up with Tulane leading 24 7. Back in a moment. At the Home Depot. So they ruled that forward progress was stopped, and he was outside the end zone. So really, everything that happened after that is inconsequential whether he was down, whether he was in the end zone, whether he threw the ball. Because again, we we're told forward progress was ruled to have stopped when he was out of the end zone at the one yard. As soon as he gets out, they ruled him down there. Plays over. Now they got to snap it because that was a two-yard loss. Got to snap it from inside the one, and you got the punter McCarthy in the very back of his end zone, catch and release, short kick. It lands at the 35-yard line. I'm not sure why that time Jaquan Jackson let it go. Just kind of ran ahead of it. 
Ended up being a 48-yard punt. Bounced. Good 10 yards. UFC fight in a welterweight main event. Stephen Thompson takes on Kevin Holland. The prelims start tonight, 7 Eastern, followed by the main card at 10. ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Plus. You got that one, Dave. Oh, Thompson. Sure. Sounds good. You know, you know, you no, know he's like ranked. Holland? No, he's ranked. Okay. So I, I'll go with the guy that's ranked. That's smart. But we've seen a lot of upsets throughout the year in college football. Maybe we'll see similar UFC tonight. It was green wave defense. It's been stellar throughout the course of the game. Clearly, different game for the Knights. No Plumlee, no Keen, and a lot put on the shoulders this freshman quarterback. And you got a veteran like Michael Pratt. Makes it tough to beat a team like Tulane presents. Spears off the left side loses yardage. Back at the 49, and Joey Claybrook, the left tackle, got pushed back into the running back. I think Spears is okay, Dave. Kind of went down gingerly there. Remember after that big run? He was down. He's kind of walking off the field. Hope he's okay. It's such a fantastic season. It's like he's in pain. Below us here on the sidelines. 182 yards on the day. It was over 1,300 yards on the season. So Shoddy Clayton Johnson is in the game of running back. And Pratt keeps it. And out of bounds at the 46-yard line. So positive yardage, gain of a handful third down at about seven coming up. Inside five minutes to go in the third. Back to their counter game. This time Pratt reads that backside defensive end close, keeps it. Shows you some of his mobility getting to the edge, picking up a couple of yards. We saw this two-lane team the first game last year. It was supposed to be against Oklahoma here at Yulman Stadium, but because of the hurricane, the game got moved to Norman. Tulane almost won that game. It also revealed some serious warts for Spencer Rattler, which eventually led the way to Caleb Williams playing for Oklahoma. As Pratt throws low and incomplete, it's going to be fourth and eight. Tulane never recovered. And they were in Birmingham for a month after that. They ended up going two and ten. But that team, that we saw a snapshot of potential in that Oklahoma game. We saw the real thing this year as they won 10 games and perhaps on their way to number 11. Got an injured UCF defender trying to make sure of the number. It's Justin Hodges, number 12. But before last year, Tulane was a good team. Three straight bowl games under Willie Fritz from 2018 to 2020. And then again, Hurricane Ida hit. We already touched on. There are players who lost their homes, lost the family members lost their homes as well. But even though they finished two and ten, they bonded as a group through that experience. Ended up being ranked midway through the season for the first time since '98 when they had an undefeated team with Sean King as the quarterback. And here they are, just over a quarter away, winning their first American championship. They've got an outstanding coach, Willie Fritz, has just done a fantastic job here at Tulane and he knew this team had a chance to be special with its leadership the veteran experience they brought to the table and he said after they were able to win in Manhattan he knew special defense and this team had a chance to really achieve some lofty goals that they had before the season it's been remarkable to watch this story unfold this season Glover just got it away and he airmails it about seven yards deep in the end zone for a touchback well, the AAC is on ESPN Plus tomorrow at 2 Eastern. The UCF men's basketball team takes on Samford. Tulane's women's team featuring number 11 LSU in a game at 5 Eastern time, plus the American Bowl preview show after the matchups are decided, including if Tulane wins its opponent in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Sign up today, ESPNPlus.com slash AAC, or download the ESPN app. From a very good conference, Plumley back in. Yeah, John Rice Plumley. Plumley. We, the Tom mentioned earlier that Gus Malzahn told him that they could put him in just to throw, and they do go empty here. O lineman down here, and it's a quick pass to Johnny Richardson, who's outside the 40-yard line to the 41. Again, a 21 on the play. Yet Grable, the left tackle, all the way out on the edge to help block there. Interesting formation, Gus Malzahn. Going back to his veteran quarterback, Rabel down low, helps pave a path for Richardson. A nice pickup, the biggest play we've seen this second half for this offense. And the first time we've seen Plumlee since he got stopped on fourth down. 
Hands it off here off the left side. R.J. Harvey, and he had the angle. To the 40-yard line and out of bounds, 20 yards. And now UCF finding a little bit of rhythm here. The second in plays, they're already to the 40 of Tulane. R.J. Harvey, the last five games, he's been excellent. You see the slight hesitation and then the burst to get to the perimeter as O'Keefe gets just enough to help secure that run to get to the far sidelines. Excellent job there by R.J. Harvey. And all of a sudden, the Knights finally have something going offensively. Again, can Plumley run? That's the question. Hands up here, and now a reverse. Brian O'Keefe getting involved in the run game finally. And he's out of bounds. That was well done by Tulane. Good discipline. Lance Robinson on the near side made the tackle. No gain on the play. Lance Robinson wasn't falling for it to Gus. Malzahn diving into his bag of tricks. The reverse trying to get the ball and O'Keefe's hand just get him out in space. And Robinson stays home, gets a nice tackle. Lovely to throw. It's a screen to the tight end, but Alec Holler can't pull it in. That's going to be third down. I don't wonder why didn't maybe UCF go to this a little bit earlier, because at least there's the threat of the run. You don't know Plumlee's health if you're a defender. You pretty much know what you're getting with Castellanos, a true freshman quarterback, if you're the defense. And you get a lot more in the throw game. It's just a veteran quarterback who's experienced, who's played, who's got a lot more confidence in a moment like this. And you can make more adjustments at the line of scrimmage at the quarterback spot, too. Absolutely. So he does here on third down of 10. Obviously, four down territory, late third, trailing by 17. Plumley to throw, late pressure, Plumley gets it away. Oh, he had a receiver wide open. There was some pressure on him. Baker downfield. Nick Anderson got into the backfield, enough pressure on Plumley, And that's why there was an errant throw, because Baker looked like he could score maybe if he caught that one. Anderson in on the blitz. Isaiah Bowser steps up. Does a pretty good job holding it off. But as Plumley tries to step in that throw, just can't get anything on it. And that pass sells wide of a wide open Javon Baker in the middle of the field. Crucial fourth down here for UCF. Baker down low, one on one. Fourth down and ten. Lovely with time. And it's caught. Bowser first down and more inside the 20, down to the 17 yard line. Eight of 23, first down. What a huge fourth down conversion here by Plumley. Locates his big veteran running back out of the backfield. And he's going to get matched up on six. Darius Hodge is a defensive lineman. He can't run with Bowser. It's a matchup that you want. And a nice find by Plumley to get inside the red zone. Johnny Richardson in the game at running back. 48 carries all season coming into today. And now Plumley changing things up here at the line. White clock is down to five. Plumley to throw, single coverage, ball thrown on the line and incomplete. Going for Kobe Hudson, good coverage by Jarius Monroe. And trying to go back shoulder to Kobe Hudson. Hudson never readjusts to the football. Jarius Monroe, you referenced in really good position. I think John Rice, Dusty, could have put a little more air and put it to the sideline a little more. And then Monroe's brother, Darian, played at Tulane. Coached at UCF, actually. He was a GA there for a couple of years. Now he's at Nichols State. That's where Jarius was at one point, transferred to Tulane. Here's a pass that's on the money to Hudson for the touchdown. Lumley moves UCF right down the field. A 17-yard touchdown, and Knights are back within 11 with the extra point pending. Drive by John Rice Blumley and UCF. Back in this ball game, come to life. Rely on the senior to step up, make some plays. Doesn't have his athleticism. And a big touchdown pass to cut this lead to 10. Well, Plumley was injured last week, and the coaches told us Plumley kept getting on the phone, the bat phone, by the uh, on the sideline and calling upstairs to the offensive coordinator. He said one time that the offensive coordinator hung up on him. Chip Lindsay, he was tired of him calling, asking the coaches to go in the game, saying he's healthy, so Lindsay hung up the phone on him. Lindsay said, you got the wrong number, quit calling. <laughs> no one's home. 
tells you the competitor in John Rice Plumley going to be an RPO. You're going to see 31 Larry Brooks' the safety. He's going to come downhill as the play action starts. It's going to leave the middle of the field wide open and a dart from Rice Plumley to locate Kobe Hudson. To your point on the competitive nature of John Rice Plumley, though, being the injured last week, wanting to come in the game. Obviously, I'm sure he went to the coaches and said, put me in, let's try something different. And, and obviously it worked. Healthy enough to go. Again, we saw last night Caleb Williams hobble throughout that game, trying to will USC to victory. And UCF with plenty of time. Now, the question is, can the defense get a stop? Well, they've gotten back-to-back -back stops. Remember, Tulane was going into score to push this to potentially 31-7 earlier. They get the punch out. Then, on the short field, the defense gets a stop. So, gotten back-to-back -back stops in crucial junctures. I just wonder, the offense showing some life, you know, how much does that energize this team overall? Short kickoff, Lawrence Keyes under it at the five. Keyes breaks a tackle through a gap at the 30. And run out of bounds by the kicker. Casey at the 45-yard line. Good return by Keyes. The inaugural Basketball Hall of Fame London Showcase is tomorrow from O2 Arena with Michigan taking on 19th-ranked Kentucky. Our coverage starts at 1 Eastern, 6 o'clock in London on ABC and the ESPN app. College basketball in full swing now with a lot of good games going on. You saw a good one the other night. I was watching you. You and Fran for Schiller. You had Texas Creighton. We have uh, UCLA Oregon tomorrow yeah, after nice. uh, the ranking show. I'll be tuned in. Pratt hands it off. Spears wrapped up and stood up, but able to get positive yardage. Made a two on the play. Jean Baptiste was there first. Here's Tom. Yeah, guys, Spears actually just came out of the locker room, so he, he missed that last couple of plays on that last switch sequence when he hit the rear end of his own offensive lineman. No noticeable limp, went right up to the coaching staff here on the sideline, said, good to go, and off he is. Look at what he's done so far. Got to be tired. <laughs> Great to see. I mean, total offense for UCF. Barely more than Spears has by himself. He can catch the football while the back throws emotions out. Got 20 catches, two touchdowns on the year. Pratt back to throw. Has time. Underneath pass for the 48. Clayton Johnson on the catch. Short by about three yards. Third down coming up inside of a minute remaining. Third. See how aggressive Travis Williams here is on this third down. This defense can come up with yet another stop. Just be massive. Put some pressure back on that two-lane defense. We saw Rice Plumley reinsert in this ball game and take his offense right down the field. Love to run the counter. We've seen a lot of that throughout the course of this game. Pratt throwing on third down and incomplete through the hands of Deuce Watts. Normally sure-handed, couldn't pull that in. Tulane went for it on fourth down earlier in the game and didn't get it. Right now they're in. UCF territory. We'll see if they go or if they punt. Well, Deuce Watts thought that was coming in the other shoulder, tried to adjust, but couldn't haul it in. That's right in the fingertips. Gotta have good, strong hands there if you're Deuce Watts. And he anticipated that to be on the other shoulder. He had plenty of time to adjust, just could not pull it in. And UCF gets the stop that they need after the big kick return. Glover punting. Penalty there. Number 96. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Why not there, right? See if UCF jumps and you get the free first down. If not, your kicker's still good enough to pin UCF back inside the 20. Well, Tom mentioned that Willie Fritz told him at halftime that he didn't, he regretted the decision to go for it on fourth down earlier. I wonder if that played a part in him electing not to go for it on fourth and three, uh, fourth and three in UCF territory. You try to pin him back, see, can. This UCF offense replicate what they did the last possession and take it the length of the field for the you know for the majority of this night. Greenway defense has been outstanding. Yep. Townsend under it, and here comes a flag. That's going to be a penalty on Tulane that will give 
UCF reasonable field position instead of being backed up inside the 10 yard line. That was Lawrence Keyes. A bad mistake by Keyes and he knows it. Point to himself. It's going to really be a huge break for UCF. Would have been backed up. Now they're going to get the football out around the 20. Kick catch, kick catch interference. Number six of the kicking team. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down UCF. So that will put the ball at about the 22 instead of the seven. The keys, it looked like at the end he was just trying to get out of the way, but tried to put the brakes on and it wasn't happening. Too much forward momentum. Got to find a way to eliminate that contact. He knows coming off to the side, that's me. Regardless, a big break for the Knights. Getting backed off their own end zone. Take a look at that last drive. Finally some life for this Knights offense. And it's John Rice Plumley who steps in. Big fourth down conversion, finds Isaiah Bowser. They convert. They come back with an RPO action. Middle of the field opens up as the safety comes down. The next thing you know, when it looked like this offense had no life, a huge scoring drive and quickly Plumley back on the field to lead this offense once again. On that last drive, Dusty, they had three plays with 20 or more yards. They had zero. Zero the entire game until that last possession. Plumley playing for injury. Was hurt in the first quarter. The handed off here, nowhere to go for RJ Harvey, spilled by Darius Hodges. No gain on the play. And that ends the third quarter. Tulane clinging to a 10-point lead, one quarter away from a conference championship and a spot in a New Year's Six Bowl game. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to the AAC Championship on ABC, presented by Arby's as part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Tulane leads UCF 24-14, never having won the American Championship. UCF is 2-0 in conference championship games since joining the American, as that pass was nearly intercepted. Dorian Williams, the linebacker, was in coverage that time, got a piece of the football. It'll bring up third down and 10. Outstanding job in coverage by Dorian Williams. Zone drop, eyes on the quarterback, steps right in front of that football. Almost an interception by the talented senior. It's exactly how it's coached. Excellent job on the PBU. John Rice Plumley, Senior from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, just a couple hours away from New Orleans. Been banged up, playing for injury, being chased here, gets away from one defender, and then throws it into traffic, almost picked off on the redirection. It'll be fourth down. He was going for Alec Holler, it got tipped, and Lance Robinson couldn't catch up to it, but nonetheless, it's a three and out for UCF. Chris Hampton getting aggressive. He's gonna bring Dorian Williams on the pressure and a wrap by Patrick Drinkins, the defensive tackle. That's what flushes John Rice Plumley and gets him on the move, and we know that hamstring isn't right. Really well done with that stunt, combination between the tackle, the linebacker, and a big stop for the two-lane defense. Dangerous decision there to throw it into traffic. Lucky he didn't get it picked off. Keys is back and secures it. A little bit of a bobble, but he hangs on to it. Fair caught at the 27. your help. I need your help. We need money for research. It may not save my life. It may save my children's lives. It may save someone you love. And it's very important. Well, the V Foundation has done such a great job over the years, thanks to you and your generous donations to help the fight against cancer. Jim Balvano's speech was on again Tuesday night, just still sensational after all these years. It was 30 years since Jimmy B. passed. Pratt downfield, Deuce Watts, goodbye. 73 yards, and that may have 
put this one away early in the fourth. the season for Watts and a point after away from this becoming a three possession game which really hurts the UCF team that does not have health at the quarterback position. Couldn't haul in that last third down catch. He wasn't dropping that one as he takes it to the house for a big touchdown. 31-14 after Ambrosio puts it through. Deuce Watts may have just after that season-long play for Tulane, sent the green wave to the Cotton Bowl. And Justin Hodges is out, so you've got Nakai Martinez 21 in. And with the running ability of Tulane, it's going to suck him up. The 21's going to get sucked up. He does not stay deep with the post. Watts is wide open as he strolls into the end zone. The effectiveness of the Tulane rushing attack freezes that young safety. Eyes in the backfield, takes one subtle misstep. Watts gets behind him and takes it to the house. Huge play for the Green Wave. And what a second window downfield throw, Dusty. Because he can't throw that early. If you saw his little pump, really good patience. And I'll tell you what, he's got much better arm strength than I think people believe he has. That's three more touchdown passes for Pratt. 24 on the season. He's thrown for 319 yards. But that's a good point, Lugs, of, of everything that we've witnessed today. Maybe the thing that stood out the most is that Michael Pratt's a really good player. And maybe not enough people know about him, but they're starting to find out, especially if he continues to play like this the rest of this game, and maybe if they make it to the Cotton Bowl. Win this game, and you got a big stage on January the 2nd in Arlington, Texas. Fair catch, it will come out to the 25. Well, we're going to, they're obviously talking about B Week there before the big play. Partnering with the V Foundation this week to highlight the urgent need for cancer research, game changing research that helps save lives. And again, if you've already donated, thank you. Certainly could use your help again in the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Thanks to so many that donate. We're talking about Jimmy V and that unbelievable speech that he gave still rings so true. Words of Stuart Scott over the years. Yes. Yep. So many others. Such a great cause, such a great foundation. Look at this formation here. They set up the wide receiver screen to O'Keefe, who tries to get outside, does before he's banged out of bounds. After he got the first down, they'll spot him out at about the 38. So a 13 yard gain. But again, they got to hurry. They're down three scores. They're continuing to keep Grable, the offensive lineman, out and Swoboda on the other side of the field. So you got the two tackles lined up 20 yards wide and then a drop by O'Keefe at midfield. Missed opportunity once again. Ryan O'Keefe open. Got to find a way to be able to bring in those type of catches, especially down 17 points. And Plumlee going out of the game. They're not bringing Castellanos in. They're going to go direct snap. Wildcat with Bowser. You wonder now, is Castellanos banged up, or do they just not want to put him back in the game? And here comes a jet sweep. O'Keefe getting involved in the run game, but runs out of room. He stepped out at the 41-yard line, so did get the first. I actually thought he stepped out around the 37, but apparently not. Watch here as he gets to the sideline. Does he stay in bounds? His job getting to the perimeter. Yeah, he got he stayed in bounds enough to move the sticks. I don't know, man. It looked like that foot was out around the 37, but it looked like they're going to look at it. First down on the 42. R.J. Harvey, we haven't really called his name a ton. Pushes the pile out to the 48, though, here. Six-yard gain with the Virginia transfer. It was a high school quarterback who has had some fumble issues. We saw him put it on the ground early in the game. It didn't cost them, though, as it was a holding call. They recovered it anyway, but penalty on UCF. But technically was not a fumble. But obviously the coaches know that even though technically it doesn't count that it's still 
means they lack a little faith in him, so they took him out. He had not returned till late in the second quarter. Harvey gets a touch here. Close to another first down at the 48 of Tulane, brought down by Darius Hodges. Opening two minutes of the fourth. UCF ball down 17. It's a physical piece of running there by Harvey, hitting it downhill. Not in a tremendous hurry. Bowser and Harvey going to be in the game here. It's third and short situation. It's a behind-the-line pass, and now throwing it downfield as Harvey got a man, it's caught. Kobe Hudson into the end zone for a touchdown. We just mentioned that he was a high school quarterback, and you see the arm on display there, 48 yards, and an important score. Only took about two minutes off the clock, and they're back in the ball game again, down 11. Well, Gus Malzahn empty in the bag here tonight, Dave. Creativity, imagination, third and short. Expecting to just run it up the middle with Isaiah Bowser. Getting on the perimeter is well defended by Tulane. An absolute dime delivered by R.J. Harvey for the touchdown toss. And again, just 2.03 off the clock. Extra point makes it a 10-point game again. Plenty of time for UCF if it can get a stop. And that's been the problem, though, for the Knights. R.J. Harvey with a beautiful throw to Hudson, his second touchdown grab of the game. The American Athletic Conference Championship on ABC is presented by Arby's. Arby's, we have the means. Some surprises. Not a lot of people saw Utah and K-State as champions. We'll crown another champ here in the American Sioux. Let's take a look at this fantastic and well-executed play on the double pass from R.J. Harvey to Kobe Hudson. All right, it's going to be just like a swing screen, so both receivers are going to act as if they're blocking. Hudson sells it. He gets the corner. Lance Robinson to bite. The safety, Larry Brooks, comes down wide open. And a perfectly thrown football from R.J. Harvey to keep this game at 10 points. Tulane has never won the American Championship. Going to get the ball back. Lead is back at 10. Be a touchback here. We'll come out to the 25. Let's check in with Kevin Nagandi in the studio. Dave, time now for our at and countdown to the CFP National Championship. Let's go to the SEC Championship. And Dan, Kenny McIntosh. Yeah, just the power run game of Georgia control on the line of scrimmage. Georgia in control on both sides. 42-23 over LSU. There he is. Mac Brown, former Tulane head coach, now head coach of the Carolina Tar Heels, getting ready for Clemson ACC Championship. And it's our primetime game on ABC. Back to you, Dave. Looking forward to that. Both Clemson and North Carolina, as you know, Kev, coming off losses last week. And keeping on the ground with Spears and it gets just a couple out to the 27. I'm glad Kevin brought up Mac Brown. You think about Tulane's program. It's a program that one time was in the SEC. They also were a program that almost was shut down on multiple occasions. Mac Brown actually came here and helped rescue the program at, at one time in the 80s. And then they had a great run late 90s. They had an undefeated team in 98. And this season has been their best since, so it's been 24 years since they've had this big of a stage. It was second 10 win season in Tulane since 1949. Tremendous season. Can they finish for the championship? Pratt to throw with time, dumps it off to Spears. And oh, he lost the ball while well, Jason Johnson just took it away. Johnson ripped it out at the 30 yard line. What a play! Wow. Really on the field. Covered by UCF. First down. Well, you see a ball at the two lane 30. Jason Johnson's been such a key piece of this defense. The transfer comes in, plant drive on the football, just rips it out, takes it away from him. He's back on the football. What an unbelievable play. Baptiste comes in, second to help make sure that ball is loose. That ball is out. The tackle secured by Baptiste. The ball right there for Jason Johnson, and all of a sudden, UCF right back in this ballgame with the takeaway. Johnson, a great example of a guy transferring 
and improving his standing as a college player and maybe at the next level. He was a two-time FCS All-American at Eastern Illinois. First team American Conference this year. Plumley off play action, setting up. In trouble. Gets rid of it, and it's complete to the 26th, but a big hit immediately by Anderson on R.J. Harvey. A positive yardage, a gain of four. You can see Plumley's not moving like he normally does, but still mobile enough to get away from pressure. Just respect the effort so much, the toughness he's playing with, not even close to 100%. Very little mobility when that's such a big part of his game, but we told you last week he was on the back phone trying to get back in. He has reinserted himself in this ball game. We're really on the field of a completed pass. It's under further review. Insert himself this ball game. He's brought life to this offense for UCF. Nick Anderson, when he comes up to make that hit, that ball looks like it might be coming out. We'll tell you after break exactly what this play looks like. So the ruling of a catch has been overturned by replay. You'll see the juggle. The ball does hit the ground. He, it can hit the ground as long as you don't trap it or lose possession of it you can see there it clearly lost it so incomplete second and ten after the takeaway at the 30 yard line down 10 points 11 08 to go John Rice Plumley playing through injury hands it off inside the 25 and down to the 24 is RJ Harvey Machado drops him so it'll bring up third down. From here, it would be about a 43-yard field goal. Try that as the long on the season for Colton Boomer. And even if they get three here, that would be a big score with plenty of time on the clock. Absolutely. Cut this to a one-score game would be huge. You know, after the takeaway, Coach Malzahn would be hoping for more. RV out, Bowser in. Saw Bowser earlier. Late in the third quarter with a big catch on fourth down. He is a capable receiver. Hudson's been the go-to guy, though. And Bowser was open. The pass downfield is caught inside the 10 by Baker. It'll be first down and goal for UCF. The Alabama transfer comes up big. I love what John Rice Plumbing does. Just slides slightly to his left. Pressure's coming. He feels it just moves. A nice job by Baker working to that void in the defense and a strike on a big third down by John Rice Plumley. You wonder watching Plumley why maybe UCF didn't go to him earlier, even though he is not 100%. Hand it off to Bowser, keeps his balance, and Bowser dies for the goal line. Touchdown, UCF! And we got a game with 9.48 to go, just like that. Two scores in about four minutes by the Knights. With just good physical running by Bowser. Sticks it up in there, keeps the legs moving. Nobody there. As he leans forward right at the goal line. Cross before that elbow hit. Looks good from here. Excellent effort after the contact. Good balance by Isaiah Bowser. Stretching to find the end zone. Tell you what, outstanding effort by this UCF football team. Looked like this game might be over, and here they are right back in it trying to cut this thing to three. And again, John Bryce Plumley, who's been banged up. Mikey Keene, who's played a ton of games, not playing in this game. It would have been game five. It would have burned a red shirt. We were told that it was the player's decision not to play. So even with Plumlee shaken up, they had to go to the true freshman Castellanos. They put Plumlee back out there, and he has engineered two huge drives in a four-minute span to make this a three-point game here in the American Championship. Plumlee came back at 4.15 of the third quarter. They've actually scored three times since. But the big play on this drive started with the defense, the takeaway by Jason Johnson, the payoff by Bowser, three-point game. More championship action to come. It is the ACC championship game in about 50 minutes or so here on ABC with Clemson facing North Carolina. Excited for that one. Can't wait to see who shows up. Disappointing losses to the year by both, but someone will be a conference champ. Be a touchback. We'll come out to the 25 with Tulane's 
lead down to three, 9.48 to go. Well, just like that, we've got a wild finish here in New Orleans. Here's how we got here, ladies and gentlemen. Looked like Tulane was going to go in for a 24-point lead, create the fumble. Then John Rice Plumley comes back in, and he has brought them back on three different touchdown drives. A double pass with R.J. Harvey. Last defensive sequence, a huge play by Jason Johnson ripping the ball from Spears. And the payoff for that Bowser touchdown, what looked like it could have been a 24-point Tulane lead. Now UCF has whittled down to three points. And remember, Tulane did score a 73-yard touchdown moments into the fourth quarter to go up 31-14. And then a drop by Spears. He couldn't hang on to that pass. Second down and 10, a rare mistake by Ty J. Spears, the player of the year in the American. So, fumble from the previous possession. Drops this, that was well defended. Devontae Brown was out there. Fantastic effort to the football, but we don't typically see Tajay Spears drop the ball. He had gone over 300 touches without a loss fumble prior to that takeaway. Go back to October of last year, the last time he had even fumbled the ball, and now he has a turnover and then a drop on consecutive plays. Here he is on second down, able to slip one tackle, and then dumped at the 27 by Justin Hodges, a gain of two. Third and eight coming up for Tulane. Well, there's a different life about this UCF defense right now. Jeremiah John Baptiste, he doesn't make the tackle, but he gets the penetration. And then the rest of the convoy gets there to get Spears down for a minimal gain. Boy, this feels like a massive third down. All the momentum right now on the side of the Knights. A lot of this air has gone out of the stadium, man. You're right. Energy and momentum on the side of UCF. And Tulane, Tom, just three for ten on third down. Brad has been outstanding though throughout. Let's see what he does here. Pressure in his face, he delivers. Past the 35, a first down to the 40, Jaquan Jackson. Brad hung in there with pressure in his face. It's a gain of 13. And Trayvon Morris Brash gonna come on the loop. He comes clean, but it's the toughness and the poise of Pratt to stand firm in the pocket and deliver a perfect pass to Jaquan Jackson. Put it out in front where the speech can go grab it. Nice one-handed grab he brings in in a crucial pickup on third down. Brad, a guy who suffered through a lot of injuries the last year plus. Had a terrific season, second team all-conference. Back to throw here. With time, receiver open in UCF territory. It's Shea Wyatt past the 30. Wyatt inside the 20. Wyatt stays in bounds. Touchdown, Tulane. Great response by the Green Wave. A 60-yard catch and run for Wyatt. UCF starting to seize momentum. Tulane grabs it back with 8.18 to go. A nine-point lead again with the extra point coming. Took just 90 seconds for Tulane to get into the end zone. That's the second touchdown catch of the game for Wyatt. The extra point sneaks inside that left upright. And the lead back to 10. Well, Michael Pratt has had an answer all game long. He has stepped up time and time again and a perfectly placed pass. Wyatt working on Thornton. Thornton just gets turned around, takes a terrible angle, slips and falls. And then Wilson unable to get Wyatt on the ground as he hits the sideline. Speed on the perimeter. And Shea Wyatt, who's been so great for this offense all season, Coaches told us the most well-rounded receiver they have. Excellent after the catch. That's really where he thrives. He puts an exclamation point after the catch for a huge touchdown to get that lead back to 10. And how about Pratt? Six yards shy of 400 passing on the day. Four touchdowns. And again, it was that third down. You got Morris Brash, the best pass rusher for UCF, right in his face. Pratt doesn't panic, delivers a strike. And then on the next play, they're in the end zone. Strong throw, puts it right where it needs to be. Poor tackling though on the back end. We saw this a week ago from UCF against South Florida, rearing its ugly head here at times against Tulane tonight as well. Now let's see now how UCF responds. 
They've handled adversity well so far tonight. And plenty of time left with 8.18 to go, trailing by 10. Both teams with three timeouts. Again, a spot in the New Year's Six on the line. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, the likely destination for the winner of this game to be the highest ranked group of five champion. Right now, UCF is 22nd, Tulane is 18th. John Rice Plumley staying in the game. Bowser just scored the touchdown in the last drive. We'll get, you know, it's a fake. And it's O'Keefe in space past the 30 and banged out of play. Making Clark another big hit at the 35, but a gain of 10 and a first down. Corner blitz brought Jarius Monroe. Just a little swing to the speed through O'Keefe. Nice pickup on first down. Really good read there, too, by John Rice Plumley. I think with, with Gus Malzahn, now that he's got Plumley in there, he has the full complement of the play sheet. You know, he doesn't have to feel like he's handcuffed trying to move the football. He can give it all and put it all in Plumley's lap. Yeah, we haven't seen any of the quarterback run. Nope. He's been battling that hamstring injury for a good part of the season. Here's a jet sweep to O'Keefe, and he gets absolutely smothered. Wow. Anderson and Williams both came in there. Laid the lumber at the 39, a gain of four. Well, they are the heart and soul of this defense. Run into the football. Watch Dorian Williams with bad intentions. But bang! As a senior linebacker drops the speedy wide receiver, Ryan O'Keefe. During seven minutes to go. UCF down 10. Here's the tight end, Holler. At the 45, going to be short of the line to gain. Good tackle by Larry Brooks to keep him from getting a first down. It'll be third and one. Bowser in the game in this spot. So earlier in the third and short, they took their shot down the field. Just got to get the first down here if you press Bowser on this offense. Tulane stack in the box with eight guys. Third down and inches from the night 44. It's Bowser getting the first down to the 49, running off the right side. Ryan Swoboda, the right tackle, first team all conference in his sixth year. College football spent five at Virginia. You got Paole, another first teamer at right guard, and they ran behind those two guys. Good movement off that right side at the push they needed to move the chains. During six minutes to go, play action. Plumley setting up, in trouble, and gets rid of it as he was about to get sacked by Deal. Second down. Good just to get rid of that football. Deal was barreling down on it from the backside. You tell Plumley felt that pressure, hard pump fake. He held on to it, was just able to get rid of that football. Chris Hampton, you see they're calling the defense, bright young. Defensive mind in a sixth year. Tulane has been a top 20 defense in the country all season. Need a stop here. With UCF at midfield, second and ten. Pressure off the edge. It's picked up and Plumley goes downfield. Single coverage. A diving attempt. Did he catch it? He did. Baker hauls it in inside the 15. And now another official came, came in and said it was incomplete. So the ruling in the field will be an incomplete pass. It's an incomplete pass. Third down. Jarius Monroe in coverage. Again, incomplete pass called on the field. I think they're going to take a look at this, Dave. It's going to be close where his hand's underneath the football. He hits the ground. That ball does tear him off and come back to his chest. I think that's the right call. Did not look like he had possession of the ball. We're really on the field of an incomplete pass under further review. Gus Malzahn is irate on the sideline. Not sure if it was that or something else. Boy, did he? Where's his hands underneath the football? If his hands are under the ball, it can obviously bounce back into his chest. Well, and see where his hands kind of separate? It looks like it might touch the ground. And, and again, the issue is it was ruled Correct. as an incomplete pass. So it Correct. has to be indisputable. Video evidence beyond all doubt to overturn it. And can you say beyond all doubt that that his hands were fully underneath that football, and it never touched the ground. It's tough. Great job by our camera crew getting as many looks at this as we possibly can. 
I, it's like his I, hands clinch over the top. Yeah, I think it's incomplete. Yeah, I think they got I it agree. right on, on the on the field. Great effort by Baker. After further review, the ruling of an incomplete pass is confirmed. Yeah. Third yeah. down. So it'll be third down and ten. Four down territory, you would think, with 5.57 to go. The UCF does have all of its timeouts remaining. We'll see what uh, Gus Belzon dials up here. Second year at UCF after eight seasons at Auburn. He replaced Josh Heupel, who had a ton of success here. They're headed to the Big 12 next season. Trying to win another American championship. Heupel won one. Scott Frost was here. He won a conference title. Can Malzahn get it done? They got to come from down 10 on third and 10. Plumley throws high and incomplete. Trying to hit Kobe Hudson, who has a couple of touchdowns in this game. And now it's fourth and 10. Ball just sails on John Rice Plumley. Had an open man starting to walk back out to the sideline, unable to locate him. Got to convert in this spot. Got to get to the 41, up too late. Let's him down in the slot. Been a prime target throughout the course of this game. Tulane rushes three, Plumlee in trouble. Moving to his right, now he takes off, and he's dragged down by Dorian Williams. Tulane takes over on downs. He's their best player on defense. He's been their poster player for the rebuild that Willie Fritz has done here. A guy that's put on 40 pounds of muscle, turned himself into an NFL player, and he may have just saved the day with that tackle. Outstanding job by Dorian Williams. And how many times have we called his name here today? Just excellent. Mirroring the quarterback, and as John Rice Plumley starts to move to his right, if Dorian Williams doesn't make that tackle, it's a first down, no question. Too fast, too good. Dorian Williams with a key stop. And Tulane takes over in UCF territory. See if they try to take some time off the clock here. Maybe force UCF to use some timeouts. They will run it here with Spear. Cuts it back. And down to the 41 for about five yards. Five and a half to go. Tulane ball leading by 10. Dusty, I think Dorian Williams is the best player on the field, regardless of which team. Overall, just best player. I thought that coming into the game, it's what we talked about. I think he's got as much potential, and the ceiling is as high for him as anybody that's here in this championship game here tonight. It's been all left on the field. And he plays hard. Great length, speed, and a great instinct on the football field. And Pratt keeping it. Pratt can tackle. Pratt got the first down. Inside the 30. And slides. Staying in bounds. The clock will stop as they reset the chains, but it's a first down to the 22. We mentioned it early in the show, the mobility and running capability of Michael Pratt. Brash comes too far down inside. It's the perfect read. Brash cannot get enough of Michael Pratt. Too strong of a runner, and he gets to the perimeter for another big first down. Smart play, too. Doesn't take the hit. It also stays in bounds. So when they reset the chains, the clock starts running, and that takes the clock inside 4.30. Here's Spears. They're getting some movement up front. Down to about 17 before they blow it dead. Another four or five yards, and Gus Malzahn will take his first timeout before 10 first remaining. First charge, timeout of the half. UCF. Take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by AT&T 5G. Georgia smoking LSU. Michigan plays Purdue tonight. Kansas State beat TCU if you're just tuning in. Reiterate your point on TCU. You think for sure they're in no matter what happens. I, I think TCU is in. Absolutely. Look, Alabama had two losses in the regular season. TCU at 12 and 0. They got beaten overtime today, but I think they've done enough in the regular season to punch their ticket. And it just feels like Ohio State's going to leapfrog USC after the, the especially defensive effort they put out last night against Utah. Those other teams, Penn State, Alabama, Tennessee, they're not playing for a championship. Clemson is. If Clemson should win the ACC championship, 
Do they have any chance? No. What if Michigan loses? You think Michigan's in no matter what? I think Michigan's in no matter what. Yeah. So basically, I, I you're saying two championship games don't matter really in the grand scheme of things today. Well, they matter to win a conference championship. Sure, but matter in terms of the college. That, that is your goal to start the season to win a, a conference title. I guess my point is it feels like the announcement of expansion coming earlier rather than later is coming at a perfect time. It is. It, it's needed. Uh, I, I think we should all celebrate. I think it's going to be a great change for college football. These championship games really do matter. This game right here would be a game to play one of these teams into the playoffs. That's a great point. And it looks like it's going to be too late because Pratt is into the end zone for a huge touchdown with four minutes to go. That green wave rolling to Arlington in about four minutes. What a performance from Michael Pratt. Watched him last year in that Oklahoma game. As tough a football player as you'll find. He's accounted for five touchdowns. Four through the air, one on the ground. The extra point was big, meaning it would take three possessions for UCF to have even a chance to come back and win. I mean, last year was just beaten and battered. He's bounced back this year, and he's been fantastic. You'll see the jet motion come across, and the defenders are going to fly down with it. Kobe Perry, John Baptiste, nobody accounts for Michael Pratt, makes the right read as he strolls in the end zone and puts an exclamation point on what it's been the performance of his career leading this team to a championship. Pratt was hobbling a little bit. I don't know if it happened here. I don't know if it happened in the celebration, but he, he was hobbling a little bit on the two-lane sideline, but looks like he'll have a few weeks to get 100%. And we came in talking so much about the UCF quarterback situation, but Michael Pratt has been the man. Last year, remember we did the opener, and he kept Tulane in that ball game, and he got beat up and beat up and never recovered all season. He's been healthy for the majority of this season, and he's been outstanding. O'Keefe will field this one of the seven. And up to the 25. Great response. 14 points by Tulane after UCF cut into a three-point game. UCF had taken all the momentum. I'll go back to that big third down. They're able to get to Jackson. Grant all game. Early in the ball game. Dying to Wyatt. Been so poised from the pocket. Showing off his strong arm. Also affecting this game here late with his mobility, his legs. It's an outstanding performance. One of the real leaders of this two-lane football team. Kind of embodies this program and its toughness and resilience as a program as Baker on the catch is dumped at the 30-yard line. Again, this was a team, this is a program that has been kind of in and out of relevance. For a time, it looked like this was going to be a program that wouldn't even exist. A couple times, they tried to take away two-lane football as that pass is incomplete intended for Alec Holler. They were in the SEC, actually, at one point some 80 years ago, but they were in the SEC back in the 40s. Administration attempted to downsize football, and from 1952 to 1965, it was a rough go. They announced to leave the SEC in 1964. The program in 1985 was in one vote of shutting down. Matt Brown was named head coach and AD amongst a scandal. He took over, got the program going in the right direction. Two hurricanes, which obviously impacted so many people in the state of Louisiana, really had an impact on this football program. Lovely in trouble on third and five, and out it goes at the 20-yard line. But you think about Hurricane Katrina, this, the team couldn't play in New Orleans. They would go to Ruston, where Louisiana Tech is. They would play games there. And then last year, because of Hurricane Ida, they were displaced, had to go to Birmingham for about a month. And they finished 2-10. and ten. They became just the 16 ever to go from 10 losses to 10 wins in one season. And they're 3-15 away from win 11. And a Cotton Bowl berth and a chance to get win number 12. Remarkable, remarkable story. 
this football team. And also have a win against the Big 12 champion Kansas State Wildcats in Manhattan earlier this season. Right, think about that. The team that just won the Big 12 championship at the time. People didn't know if K-State was very good. They obviously were. They only lost you know, one game after that in league play, but Tulane came in there and shut them down, held them to 10 points. Michael Pratt was the best player maybe on the field that day. Tulane won that game 17 to 10. That's when they knew. They had a defense that could really step up and help lead this team to potentially something special. Good coach Willie Fritz recognized this team really can put it all together and make a run for a championship, which they are now on the brink of realizing. First, first charge down to the half. Too late. So too late seconds. wants to talk this over here with uh, Obviously, if UCF doesn't convert on fourth and 15, this game's over. It'll be the first American championship for Tulane, its first conference title of any kind since 1998 when it was in Conference USA. Cincinnati obviously won it last year, made the college football playoff. We we're talking about how good the American Conference is. It sent a team to the playoff last year. UCF won a couple of championships. At Tulane to that list. And how about Willie Fritz, guys? He's about to win his 196th game. I mean, it's just, and he's done it at every level. Yeah, in fact, we talked about this earlier. There's clearly some interest from Georgia Tech. He told us when it was going on, he told his team he wasn't going anywhere. At least for now, he's staying with the Green Wave. Guy that's won at every level. Fourth down and 15. Got completion in UCF. Able to move it out to about the 45 with Kobe Hudson. Three minutes to go. It's grabbed there by Hudson, plucking that ball out of the air. Got to convert on a fourth and 15 to give yourself any kind of chance. As UCF trying to stay alive here late in this game. Lovely in trouble. Throws complete. Townsend. And it's a first down. Willie Fritz, we talked about him winning everywhere. He was an FCS coach of the year, two junior college championships. There was a point where he was doing everything. He wasn't just the head coach. He was putting together the media guy. He was doing laundry as a head coach, trying to get jerseys ready for his players as Plumlee is knocked down for a one-yard loss. Told us he comes from humble beginnings. He never has Second lost or will lose half. side of his roots and where he's from. UCF. It's how he coaches. It's what he instills into seconds. his players, and it's what's got him on the brink of being the American Conference champions. And again, love the fact he told us, like, I was even an announcer. I was doing track and field events as a broadcaster while I was a head football coach. And he's going to get Tulane its first 10-win season in a quarter century, bowl eligible for the fourth time in the last six years, and will be in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. On January 2nd. Dusty, his path is, is so similar to a guy like Lance Leipold, right? Where you just, you start out at the grassroots level, you have no resources, you find ways to scrap and scrape, develop players, and you win, and then you get opportunities at the next level, and the next one after that. And you just have such an appreciation for not only program builders, but program sustainers. No question, and he has sustained this program here at Tulane. Now four out of five bowl games, with the biggest and brightest coming this season. That pass incomplete. So it'll be third down at 11 226 on the clock. And for UCF, this will be its last game in the American. Obviously, it will go bowling, but then it will be off to the Big 12. Gus Malzahn, very excited about this opportunity. You can tell there was joy in his face. Called this job at UCF, potential gold mine of opportunity. Very excited about their move to the Big 12 after this. He enjoyed his time, two years here in the American, but thinks the Big 12 can take recruiting in other parts of this program to need another level. Pass is caught, short of the line again, going to bring up fourth down. Gus Malzahn, when he got fired at Auburn, he said he wasn't sure he was going to get back into coaching. In fact, he said he explored doing television, but friend got the athletic director's job at 
He told his wife, if, if I if I get that call, I'm taking that job. That, that's the one job I know I'm going to take. And he said about five minutes later, he got the call. And you use the term gold mine. That's exactly what he said. He told his wife, said, I, I got to take it. It's a gold mine. And, and be interesting, though, in the Big 12 next year. It's a step up, obviously. Nothing against the American, but still going to play Oklahoma and Texas over the next year plus before they leave for the SEC. And Kansas State and TCU. Pass caught inside the 35 by O'Keefe to move the chains. Both dead at the 33. 146 to go. Larry Brooks, a little extra added ump there at the end of that play. Officials keep the flag in their pocket. This game ticks down under two minutes to go. Long throw by Plumley, caught. First down by Baker. He may have stepped out and then come back in and gone out on his own and been the first guy to touch it. Yep, and you see an official with his cap off. If you're pushed out, you can come back in, but if you go out on your own, you can't be the first to touch it. Legal touching, number one of the offense. He went out of bounds on his own and was first to touch the ball afterwards. Lost it down, previous spot, second down. Been, uh, brushing up on all of your rule book. <laughs> well done there, Dave Pash. You know, you guys and Luke's were out having dinner celebrating, and I was back home, you know, sure. with the fire on, just yeah. reading the rule book last night. Absolutely, oh, yeah. Getting ready for the broadcast. I expect nothing less from you. Yep, that's what happened. Second, second and ten. The 33. And playing really soft zone coverage, just trying to keep everything in front. Bumley somehow got out of there and completed that pass. Man, he took a shot, but yeah, Angelo Anderson leveled him, and he still delivered the pass to Alec Pollard. Third down. We're about a minute and 28 away from the trophy presentation, which you can get on the ESPN app. We're about 15 minutes away from the ACC championship on ABC between Clemson and North Carolina. A third down and six. Bowser. To be short, and then fourth down. The approach one minute to go. Big collision there. Dorian Williams coming up to make that hit on Bowser. Bowser got the first down. A minute to go. Move the chains. They built this stadium in 2014. They've been playing at the Superdome for so long, but built this on campus venue, the open stadium, it seats about 31,000. The student section has been very boisterous tonight and all season long, and a lot to celebrate New Orleans tonight. Low pass and incomplete. Hudson could not pull it in. Incomplete pass. Second down. John Rice Plumbing, I'll tell you what. He should have earned the respect of all of his teammates. Not that he didn't have it already, but you know, clearly was not 100% coming into this game. Has been really had an ailing hamstring going back to the first time these two teams played. He had such a big impact. Been in and out of the lineup the last several games. Didn't finish the Navy game. Didn't finish last week against South Florida. Take another look at this. See if Hudson was able to get his hands underneath that football. Didn't know tonight how much he'd be able to go. Clearly, he's not out even close to 100%. Well, it looked like he got his hand underneath that day. Rolling in the field was an incomplete pass that they have not announced yet whether they're reviewing this further. Darius Hodges shaking up for Tulane. Let's, let's shift storylines for a second. Rolling on the field of an incomplete pass. It's under further review. So, again, while they look at this, it really has no bearing on the outcome. Tulane's going to go to. Uh, New Year's Six game. How do you think the Green Wave will fare? Obviously, we don't know the opponent yet. Probably guess of about three or four teams who they're going to face. But how do you think they'll do? I can't wait to watch. They play really good defense. They run the ball effectively. Tajay Spears, they got a quarterback that's playing with a ton of confidence. 
putting up 649 in this game, fourth most in school history. And they're going to treat that game like their Super Bowl. I mean, it is going to be their national championship and their opportunity on a massive stage to show exactly what this program is all about. You best believe Willie Fritz will have that team ready to play. I would expect most of the young men will be there ready to play. And this opt-out bowl world that we live in, you never know exactly how many guys are actually going to show up and be there for the game. So I think that they're going to step up and farewell against whoever their opponent is. There's been a variety of different names that have been out there. Hate to over-speculate, but whoever it is, they're going to get this football team's best shot. I believe that. And they're going to get a quarterback who is red hot. Michael Pratt, career high, 394 passing yards, four touchdowns through the air, one rushing touchdown. He had the one interception, but that was on a play where he got hit. It's a big deal for Tulane, considering again where this program has been, what they've been through. Really on, at the further just the last 12 months. Really on the you think about again Second down. last year with Hurricane Ida and players losing homes, coaches losing homes. Didn't have power. Some didn't have power for a month. They were in Birmingham. 27 nights they spent in Birmingham, Alabama. And again, they were practicing outdoors. If there was bad weather, they'd have to drive to Tuscaloosa to, to use Alabama's indoor facility. They go two and ten. And the coaches told us in our meetings yesterday that as a group they still believed that they could turn it around they believed that they had the pieces in place to do exactly what they've done this year Plumley slides to the 21 with about 40 seconds to go and a timeout by UCF be the final charge team timeout of the hat he laid out there perfectly Dave it's a remarkable story belief it's a powerful thing and then for these young men this team this program the staff for them to be able to go out execute, get it done, achieve those lofty goals and expectations when nobody outside of themselves believed they could. It's great stuff. It's what college football is all about, man. It's what it's all about. And again, just six times this has happened where a team has gone from losing 10 games one year to winning 10 the next. And the Navy in 2019 went from losing 10 to winning 11. And it looks like Tulane's going to do that. Again, we'll have a chance to win its 12. Looks like the students are ready to, to rush the field here and celebrate. Still 44 seconds to go. No timeouts left for UCF. They're down in five at the two-lane 17. His pass batted in the air, incomplete. Keith Cooper got a hand up. Fourth down. And Keith Cooper, long lever, 6'5", 275. Those hands up. Defense trying to get one more stop to close the door on this ball game. on the move, throwing complete and a first down. Out of bounds is Townsend. First and goal with 31 seconds to go. You have to wonder if you're UCF, have they gone to Plumley earlier when things have been different in this game? They played Castellanos, the true freshman, for a good part of that first half and third quarter until they went back to at least try Plumley. Offense had no life at all with the true freshman. And Plumlee's passing to play, going for Baker. Plenty of life here since John Rice Plumley has come back in late in the third quarter. Again, with Mikey Keene unavailable today, not because of injury, but we're told that he didn't want to burn his red shirt. So he told the coaching staff that he would not be suiting up for this game. So. With Plumley coming in already, not 100%, battling a hamstring injury. They went to the true freshman Castellanos. They got down 24 to 7, but Plumley brought him back. But just not enough time here. 
And again, the defense of UCF just couldn't stop too late. 22 seconds left, third down. Pressure coming down on Plumley. Nice job condensing that pocket by the defensive line collectively. Just couldn't step into that throw. He had Hudson open in the end zone to fall short. Started out at Ole Miss, a quarterback, yep. rushed for over a thousand yards. New offensive staff comes in, went to a wide receiver, and then Coach Malzahn reached out to him, recruited him when he was at Auburn. Hey, I want you to come here and be my quarterback, and and he's been healthy and been able, really put together a nice season running this offense. Plumley dumps it off, short of the goal line, and that's it. Harvey wrapped up, and guess who? Dorian Williams, who really is the face, at least defensively, of this great rebound season for the Green Wave. He makes the tackle. They are one knee away from Arlington. And as you reference Finney, that he is the makes the final tackle of this American season, close out this championship game, just been instrumental and what this defense has been able to achieve throughout the course of this season. And the Tulane offensive players are they're over there. The crowd's already hyped. They're trying to get them even more hyped as they'll take a knee close to their student section. Right there, that recognition. You see the hugs. See the emotion, the recognition. They did it. The greatest turnaround story in college football will continue at the Cotton Bowl. From 10 losses to 11 wins, Tulane is the American Conference champs in 2022. have gone by since Tulane was able to celebrate a conference title. Been a phenomenal story all season watching Willie Fritz lead this football team and to see him here tonight cap it off with a conference championship. Congratulations to this program. It's been an unbelievable ride and best of luck in the Cotton Bowl. Final score Tulane 45 UCF 28. For Dusty Dvorak, Tom Lugan, Bill, I'm Dave Pash. College football scoreboard coming up next. And then the ACC Championship, Clemson in North Carolina. So long from New Orleans, Tulane. American title in 2022. Dave, thank you. What a scene there as Tulane celebrating their first American championship. We're getting ready for the ACC Conference Championship. A team and a program all familiar of the environment. That is the Clemson Tigers. Getting ready to face North Carolina, our primetime game on ABC. Dan Mullen, Booger McFarland, Kevin Agandi here with you. When we talk about the ACC, of course, Drake May, DJ Uyunglele, the big concern is both these guys are coming off losses. Yeah. And Drake May, what do we need to see from this young man coming into this contest? Well, I'm excited to see how he responds from him. He's had such a special year. He became a Heisman candidate, and maybe the pressure got to him and he slipped a little bit, but he does it with his arms. He does it with his legs. He's one of the best quarterbacks in all of college football. I can't wait to see him perform tonight. And which DJ is going to show up? Is it the guy against Wake Forest that was outstanding or the guy against Syracuse who got benched? The inconsistency of D.J. Uyunglele has been the, the really reason that Clemson's season has been up and down. I think he can play good tonight. Who you got? I'm going with North Carolina. I think Max defense led by Gene Chizik will show up just enough. I'm going North Carolina. Much more coming your way after this. I'd like to.